Sun Splash New Year's Day in Dallas, Texas. We welcome you to the 67th annual SBC Cotton Bowl on Fox. Two of the great powers in college football history collide today as the LSU Bengal Tigers take on the Texas Longhorns. And a happy New Year's to you and yours alongside Ron Pitts and Tim Green. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to college football here on Fox. When the season began, the Longhorns had aspirations, Ron, of a national championship. Right. Obviously, it didn't work out that way, but they are back on the college football Mac under head coach Mac Brown, and a big reason why, their quarterback, Chris Sims. That's right. You look at Chris Sims. He's got all the tools, I think, to someday be a big-time NFL player. And as he goes, Texas goes. The big problem, Sims has not played well or won the big games here in Texas. He has to prove that. This is his senior year, his last chance to wear the burnt orange. He wants to go out a winner in that fashion. And he's a guy that really needs to start out right in the game. You know, if he gets some rhythm, then he gets a little confidence, and with the confidence comes some effectiveness. And he's got a wide receiver that I think can make anybody effective, Roy Williams. Now, Roy Williams is a big-time impact player. He can change a game with one play. He's strong, he's got great hands, and he can get behind the defense. And, Tim, you look at LSU, and I think that's the dilemma for them. they got to find a way to get the Sims and at the same time stop Roy Williams. Well, the good news for LSU is they've got the number two pass defense in college football. So they know what they're doing, but even with those kind of statistics behind them, they look at Roy Williams and they say, no, no, we need to put not one but two guys on him. They need to press him with a cornerback and back that cornerback up with a safety. But if you do that, how do you at the same time pressure Chris Sims, as Ronnie said, how do you also stop the run game? You need somebody that's tough, somebody that's fast, and somebody that also plays the game with their mind. Well, LSU may have that guy in middle linebacker Brady James. James is not only an All-American on the field, he's an academic All-American. And this guy knows how to play the game with his head. Look for a big X's and O's battle between Brady James, who's been prepped with a film work by, quarter, by coach Nick Saban, right. against Chris Sims, who's been prepped by his by father, his Phil right. Sims. You talk about LSU, they began the season at 5-1. and one. They beat Florida, but in that game, they lost their starting quarterback, their star sophomore quarterback, Matt Mock, yeah. and ever since then, it's been Marcus Randall. He's done a decent job, 2-3, and three, however, are the numbers. Marcus Randall, young quarterback, he's still learning to throw the football and act like a quarterback in the pocket. He's only a redshirt sophomore. The offense is very watered down for him, very simple. They have to protect him. The way they're going to do that is with a power run game. Two running backs, LeBrandon Tofield and Dominic Davis. Tofield is a straight-ahead power guy. He's going to try to run you over. Dominic Davis, Tim, is a make-you-miss guy, and they think this will work against Texas because Texas had a lot of speed on the football field and defense. That's right. Texas is fast, but they're a little light. Look for them to get a lot of men at the line of scrimmage, a lot of penetration, a lot of upfield movement. They can cover man-to-man. They've got a lot of confidence in all their cornerbacks. I think the key may be defensive end Corey Redding. He's an All-American. He's outstanding, and he's going to have to get up field and contain Marcus Randall. Keep him in the pocket. It was 40 years ago tomorrow here at the Cotton Bowl when Texas and LSU last met. LSU won that one pitching a shutout. The 67th annual SBC Cotton Bowl kicks off when we return. LSU and Texas, you're watching College Football on Fox. The SBC Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is brought to you by Triple X, available now on DVD. By SBC, ordinary people, extraordinary job. By Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. And by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. A sellout crowd of 70,000 welcomes the LSU Bengal Tigers.
the Bayou. An LSU season defined by two fantastic finishes. With two seconds left in Lexington, the Tigers were praying for a bluegrass miracle, and it was answered. But three weeks later, the tables turned in Little Rock as the Hogs stole the SEC West title in the final second. LSU finishing the season at eight and four in a three-way tie for first in the SEC's Western Division. Meanwhile, a 10 and two year for Mac Brown and the Texas Longhorn. And as you can imagine, the Longhorn faithful rise as one in Burn Orange. Expectations in Austin this year were as huge as the Lone Star State. But the road to glory hit a speed bump in this stadium when again Oklahoma won in a top five showdown. But the Longhorns bounce back behind a quick strike offense headlined by running back Cedric Benson, quarterback Chris Sims, and wide receiver Roy Williams, who just made it known to the Longhorn fans that he would return for his senior year. Let's send it downstairs for our coin toss and our referee, Gerald Wright. The captains, it's a special coin for the Cotton Bowl. LSU on one side, Texas Longhorn on the other side. John Stanky of the SBC Bowl will do the honors of the toss. John. LSU. Texas won the toss. What were your choices? Defer. Defer. Texas has won the toss, and they will defer second half. Which would you like to do? Okay, which which way would you like? To do? Okay, go around this way. Turn around. LSU will receive this way. Okay, gentlemen. For more on today's SBC Cotton Bowl Classic, let's welcome in our fourth member of the broadcast team today, the former Dallas Cowboy, Brian Boldinger. Tom, we're down here with Mac Brown. Mac, what does this game, the Cotton Bowl, mean to you and to your program? Well, Brian, anytime you're playing a ball game at the University of Texas or at LSU with these storied programs, uh, winning's important. So it's important for us to get our 11th win. It's important to us to end up uh, on a high note because these seniors have played very well for us over the last four years. Mac, the last time you were here three years ago, you were disappointed and embarrassed by your performance. What did you do this year to prevent that from happening again? Well, we're a lot better than we were three years ago, Brian, so I didn't talk much about that when I talked about the 10 wins this year and a positive attitude. And, of course, we want to wish everybody a happy new year. Everybody's undefeated right now. All right, Mac, good luck to you. Thank you. Back to you, Tom. Brian Boldinger will be checking in with you throughout the entire game today. Just a wonderful series that goes back, but we mentioned it's been 40 years since they've gotten together. That's hard to believe, Border States. And the last time they got together, 40 years ago tomorrow in the Cotton Bowl, the last shutout in Cotton Bowl history when LSU knocked off national title hopes for the Longhorns that year. You couldn't ask for a more beautiful day. 52 degrees temperatures expected to climb as high as 61 wind could be a factor today blowing out of the northwest anywhere from 15 to 25 miles per hour. Dick Saban a 51 year old native of Fairmont West Virginia in his third season at LSU led him to an SEC championship and a Sugar Bowl win last year they've had to battle through so many injuries. They've also had players suspended, including their outstanding safety, Damian James, and they believe that has kept them from being SEC champions once again. Every ticket issued to both schools sold out in less than three hours. What a beautiful day. What incredible enthusiasm. 
from the Texas supporters, the LSU supporters, all week long, Tom. This this Cotton Bowl, and we've been here now for four years, has, to me, had more energy, more excitement during the week than anyone I've seen. And, you know, for the University of Texas, they're approaching this game like it is a national championship game. I mean, they didn't like the way things worked out the last time they were here against Arkansas. And it's all business from talking to the coaches and the players. You can feel that. I agree, Ronnie. And I know Mac Brown made light of the fact that they lost the last time they were here against Arkansas. But he mm -hmm. told us he was embarrassed by that game and his team's performance. LSU will receive. And the 67th SBC Cotton Bowl is underway through the end zone. And LSU will get the football led by their sophomore quarterback, Marcus Randall. Randall took over for Matt Falk in the Florida game, led the Tigers to a win over USC, then threw four interceptions in a critical loss to Auburn. Wound up two and three in his five starts. Up front, Whitworth, Peterman, John Young in place of the outstanding center, Ben Wilkerson, joined by Sale and Reed. In the backfield, Dominic Davis and Solomon Lee, the tight end, Eric Edwards, Jarrell Myers, and Michael Clayton, their leading receiver. And they give it to Dominic Davis. He's out to the 24-yard line. A gain of four. It'll bring up second and six. The Longhorns defensively. First team All-American, number 40. We'll watch him all day long. Corey Redding. The linebacking core, fast, talented. Their leading tackler is Reed Boyd. And in the secondary, outstanding corners in Babers and Basher, Huff and Pearson, the safety. right and fires to the near side complete to Michael Clayton to the 37 yard line and a first down for LSU good start for Randall and Michael Clayton is a guy that could be very big in this game you know LSU is a running team well I think it's going to be important for LSU to continue to do what they do right here get Marcus Randall outside the pocket let him roll out let him see the field so I was saying LSU is a running team that's smart by Nick Saban to come out and throw that ball right off the bat here to try to get Texas defense off balance. Dominic Davis alone set back. Quick slant across the middle and out across is midfield again. is again Michael Clayton, the Tigers' leading receiver during the season with 51 reception. And Tim, you know the reason they're doing this. Texas has brought down the safety to make an eight-man front the last two plays in a row. They're saying, we're going to make you keep those safeties back there and defend this pass. Michael Clayton being covered man-to-man. -man. He runs a slant. There's a crossing pattern underneath him to clear the coverage. And Clayton, as you said, Ronnie, he's their money guy. And they're going to work on Babers today. They think that Babers is a guy that they can get something on. They've got him targeted. Davis trying to find a hole, picks his way inside the 45, down to the 43. This Texas defense held its opponents to the 12th fewest yards per game in NCAA Division I football and the eighth fewest points per game. Well, when you look at this defense, Tommy, you look at it, you say they're a little light, and so you think that maybe you can run right at them. And LSU right now, they're running right at them, but they're also able to find something in the passing game. A second and five and Randall to throw. Good protection. Guns it over the middle in a third time. He finds Clayton inside the 30 down to the 27. Another shot by Marcus Randall. One thing Marcus Randall has is a gun for an arm. He doesn't always know where he's going and when to go there, but when he's got a man open, he can do that. That's just arm strength. That's arm strength, Ronnie, but he also is, is reading the defense extremely well. Texas, they're in man-to-man. -man. His receivers are, are separating themselves from that man coverage. 52 yards picked up by LSU on this opening drive. They give it to Davis. He slips a tackle and has room inside the 20 and barrels his way to the 13. A lot of people wondered whether or not LSU was going to be able to even stay in this game with the ninth rated Longhorns. And I got to tell you, right now, the way this game is going, Texas better buckle up. 
They're missing tackles, they're missing coverages, and LSU is taking it to them. Tim, you and I were here three years ago when they took on Arkansas, Texas heavily favored in that game, and they were worn out by the Hall. Exactly, Tommy, and that's exactly what Mac Brown said. We don't want LSU to be another Arkansas. They snuck up on us and got us. Davis tripped up inside the 10 by Nathan Vasher. Had help along with Michael Huff coming up from a strong safety position. And let me tell you, see, that, that right there will make your secondary weak. When your safeties got to come up and get involved in the run game and at the same time think, wait a minute, we've got pass going on. You know, Clayton has burned them a couple times here. So your safeties are in that middle ground, that gray area of what to do. And that's when they get real susceptible to play action pass. secondary by Vasher coming up to slow him down. Yeah, that's that's not a play you want to run against this Texas defense. We talked about the speed that Texas have. They're a little light. And so when you run to the perimeter, guess what? They're going to track you down and find you. And there's Corey Redding right there, the defensive end, who really has the speed of an outside linebacker. You get to see that on this play. Tim, what a delightful the, guy. I too. think the first thing a fan at home says, wait a minute, anything in Texas is light for crying out loud? <laughs> the Texas is, defense well, is light. Yeah, I should, yeah, and I should they're fast. That, except for their two defensive <laughs> tackles. tackles. They right. got a couple big hogs in the middle. Tubbs and Wright. They need to get to Blitz. the three for a first down. LSU picks it up. Fired across the middle, the reception made by Jarrell Myers, but he's bottled up at the 11. This is a beautiful tackle by Rod Babers. They call him Kool-Aid because he's got the big smile, the Kool-Aid smile, and I guarantee you he's got a big Kool-Aid smile after this hit. Here's Clayton on the crossing route. He comes across the middle. Now Babers has got to stop him. Ronnie, that looked like you tackled. Actually, that was a little bit better. He got his head across. I could never see him to do that. 27 yard field goal attempt. And it is good by John Corbello, the senior out of Lafayette, Louisiana. He has not missed inside of 30 all year. What a drive for the Tigers. And they lead at the SBC Cotton Bowl 3-0. Opening drive. Gets a 27 yard field goal to take a 3 0 lead. Well, the Tiger and the Longhorn faithful up and at him early and ready to go tailgating this morning. Hey guys, I thought it was interesting what Nick Saban said about his team and their approach to this ball game. He said, This is not for this year, this is for next year. Yeah. Even though it is next year, but you know, they're talking about recruiting and they didn't like the way they finished up the season. That was a big loss to Arkansas. Could have put him in the SEC championship game. This is a chance for identity here. Short kick. Selvin Young, the freshman. They think he has a chance to be a star for the Longhorns in the future and brings it out to the 34. The final college game for the fourth year senior out of Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Chris Sims, of course, the son of former New York Giants star quarterback and Super Bowl MVP Phil Sims. 25 and 6 as a starter for the Longhorns. He's led him to back to back 10 win seasons. He's had his good days and his not so good days, and the not so good have come on this field. Well, I think the not so good have, have toughened him mentally, and I think that's why he's going to be able to succeed at the next level. Seven-yard line. Let's meet the rest of the Texas Longhorns offensively. Stone, Holloway, Glenn, Dockery, a first-team All-American, the right guard, 76. We'll watch him all day. And Jonathan Scott, the right tackle. Benson has rushed for nearly 900 yards. Ivan Williams was a tailback last year, moves to fullback. D.J. Johnson and the spectacular split-in Roy Williams. We'll watch him all day long. His first throw, nope. A little shovel pass, and it didn't fool LSU. Marcus Spears read it beautifully. 
They call the LSU defense the James Gang, the fifth best defense in college football this year. You get a look up front. The linebacking core led by the name this defense is nicknamed after Brady James. Tim talked about him in the open. A first team All-American and a first team academic All-American. Hookfin and Gay, the corners. Lejeune and Hunt, the safety. Third and 10. Right now, Corey Webster is locked up man to man on one of the best receivers in college football. Sims, the left-hander, fires. It's batted down. Three and out for Texas. And those are the kind of plays that LSU has to make. Chris Sims told us, I want to start this game off and play it close to the best, mainly because I'm not sure what Nick Saban is going to give me on his third down packages. This time, they throw to a guy that's double covered. Well, I got to tell you, Ronnie, on the back side of this play, it was Roy one -on -one Williams, with Williams. You don't understand covered. that. Yeah, he's being covered man to man. Now, Corey Webster did a nice job of covering him, but Texas, if they get that matchup, they better start throwing the ball towards Williams. It's all about the start for Chris Sims. When he struggles early, the team tends to struggle early. One of the great punt returners in the country, Dominic Davis waits, and he'll let it bounce by him. It's inside the 10 and down at the 7. Good punt by Bradford, 58 yards. LSU will get it back in Dallas, Texas on this New Year's Day when we return. A great start for sophomore quarterback Marcus Randall. For more on him, let's go downstairs to Brian Bowling. Tom, you look on Marcus Randall, the quarterback's left wrist. He's got a play sheet on his wrist, and the plays are numbered. Because of the noise down here today, the coaching staff has just given Marcus a number and then he reads the number and the courting play to it to his team and it really uh, is good with the communication down here right now. Well Marcus Randall right now is a perfect four for four with 45 yards passing and that enabled LSU to get that field goal. They start from their own seven this time. And they're throwing on first down. Swing it out of the backfield a wide open Dominic Davis. And he crosses a 30-yard line. Dominic Davis has been known as a rusher, a guy that can make you miss, as we talked about in the open. But I think it's very smart to take that guy and give him an extended handoff. And that's all that play is, Tim. We've I am that. really impressed with the touch that Marcus Randall put on that pass. I mean, people talk about his arm strength. They talk about his inexperience. I mean, he is cool under pressure right now. He's five for five, Ronnie. He's moving this offense right through the Longhorn D. See the numbers on Randall, perfect for 72 yards. Out of the shotgun, hands it off for the first time to LeBrandon Tofield. And he picks up maybe a yard. Stopped there by Corey Redding. A great play by Corey Redding. I love to watch Corey Redding work. And and he he just works so hard. You know, we, we've seen guys that, that talk about, hey, you know, my mom, I love my mom. This guy just glows when he talks about his mom, Mary. Watch him right here. Watch him work right around the edge. He busts right through the line of scrimmage, and he, he's got great body control. So he gets upfield, but he still has the control where he can lean inside and make that tackle. The first team all American. You know, this is a part of Carl Reese, the Texas defensive coordinator's plan. It's called the spin down theory. And he takes faster guys from different positions and he puts them in new positions where they can get the advantage in terms of speed. And you look at Redding, he was a linebacker in high school. He came here playing some linebackers. So Reese said, let me put you in a defensive end spot. You're going to be quicker than most tackles and can beat them inside and make plays like this. Boy, was he a great kid talking oh. with him two days ago? <laughs> he, he's, he's a guy you just wanted to take him home with you. Derek Johnson's actually, actually the one who came in and made that initial hit. Third down. Randall escapes trouble. He takes run. it himself, and he stops shy of the first down to the 39-yard line. One out of bound by Lee Jackson. So three and out this time for LSU after the long pass to begin this drive. And this is against Texas. Flag is 25 yards down the field. Mm -hmm. 
talk about big penalties. They keep drives going, and that's exactly the kind of thing that LSU needs early in this game. What a job Mac Brown has done here. After the play, personal foul. Defense, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. For those of you that don't know the college game, they don't tell you who did it, but our cameras do know. And that's Takari Pearson. There's no reason for that. I mean, that's an old Jack Tatum shot there. I like and those the, guys. You like know the what though? I like the way Michael Clayton reacted. Yeah, I, I do too. You see, he gets up and he said, "Yeah, you know what? You got me." And it, I mean, he didn't react by taking a cheap shot of his own, and that really kept this LSU drive going. Great control by Clayton. Matt Brown didn't like the way he reacted, though. He gave Pearson an earful. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was immediately yanked out of the game. Well, he didn't and like the, the red way shirt freshman, did. Kendall Bryles, number five, <laughs> came off. Well, nothing so far is going right for Texas. And LSU takes the opening kick. They drive right down the field. They come up with three points. And then Texas's offense goes three and out. Yeah, right. Look how long the Texas defense has been on the field already. We're midway through the, more than midway through the first quarter. Well, setback, Solomon Lee. Screen. And a screen and the ball dropped by Dominic Davis. And that play has been very successful for LSU. And they run it to a different guy, a guy named Skylar Green, who comes off the bench, who can fly. They had a big play, a 72-yard touchdown against Arkansas. But that time, Davis just has to hold on to the ball. Well, you know what? He saw what I saw, which was a big lane to, to take off through. If he catches that ball, Ronnie, he's got a big running lane right through the middle of the field, and he just took his eyes off the ball and started out down the lane. And that graphic there shows you the slow start from Texas. LSU just jumping all over him in terms of yards. Well, you had too many letters in there. You said slow. It's no <laughs> offense from Texas. Randall, a terrific athlete, rolls away from trouble. He'll keep it himself and gets to the first down. Or did he? He may have stepped out of bounds shy, a yard shy of the 36-yard line, depending on where they spot it. I'm not sure he got there. You know, this is beginning to remind me a little bit of a quarterback who plays for the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> I mean, well, this is the kind yeah, of stuff yeah. I've, I've watched Michael Vick do all season long. Get pressure, spin out of the pocket. But, but Tim, I, he did not get to the no, first down mark. No, he did. He did. And that's inexperience. Like we said, that's a redshirt sophomore starting this year for the first time. And that looked Look who's the guy who forces him though. Instead of criticize Randall, I'd rather credit Corey Redding, who came from the opposite down. side of the field to knock him out of bounds. They're gonna go for it. LSU 9 of 15 this year on fourth down conversions. And we'll see. Very, very close. You know, we've seen some crazy marks or spots in the NFL this year. From here, it looks like he made it. And yeah, he did. And that, and that, and that, exa that right there was an example of Toefield, a big physical back, running over a Texas defender who's really a, a quarterback-sized guy playing safety. And I think that's a great decision, maybe a no-brainer by Saban. You know, he feels they come in here with a little bit of a short sti stick, at least from a, a notoriety standpoint. Hey, there's no, nothing to lose by well, not going for that. Saban's <laughs> won his last two bowl games You're right, with I don't, upsets. I know. So this is nothing new to LSU. Play fake and Randall rolling right, looking down the field. He'll hang on to it. Gets wrapped up in a spun down at the 33-yard line. Maybe a gain of three. Derek Johnson, a sophomore who they believe is going to be one of the all-time greats at linebacker for Texas, wrestles him down. Derek Johnson, you talk to a lot of the NFL scouts, and he's one of those guys that he represents the nastiness that you want on your defense. You know, Tim, you got to have one guy like this, a, an enforcer, so to speak, that'll do a lot of damage, that'll be very physical and intimidate people, and that's what he is for this defense. Yeah, he's, he gets his hips low, and he, and he gives you a snap when he hits. Finding running room. Not much so far from LeBrandon Tofield. We brought up earlier. He broke his left arm. 
was out for six weeks this season. I tell you, when this guy is healthy, he is some kind of player. Has rushed for over 2,000 yards and fewer than 19 starts. And that's a key thing because LSU's pass game depends a lot on their ability to play action. The sooner they get that going, they're going to have more success throwing the football. Now, they came out throwing it pretty darn say, good. You'd have, have, you have to have a, a, an angel on your side to get more success. Their, their passing game has been outstanding. Clayton in motion on a third and six. There it is again. But Clayton inside the 20 to the tight end, Derek Edwards. But the penalty flag is down in the LSU backfield. We'll see. And Edwards is down, too. I don't know if this is going to come back, but Marcus Randall is impressing me not only with his throwing ability, but the decisions he's making and where he's throwing the ball. Oh. Penalty will go against the Tigers, so it will indeed come back and bring up third and long. Yeah. Offense. Repeat third down. Tim, we looked at Marcus Randall on tape a lot this week, and there was a couple of games where we weren't quite sure what we were going to get today. He looked unsure of himself a few times and threw some balls and you know, skipped to receivers, but, boy, we're, we're not seeing that guy today. Well, this is a guy who got hurt in spring practice, hurt his knee, so he missed a lot of development there. He wasn't the starter for the first half of the season, so he is continuing to evolve. Third and 11, they need to get to the 25. Randall under pressure, the ball is loose. And Texas has it. Lee Jackson will go all the way. Touchdown, Longhorn. Redding knocked it loose, and Jackson cashes in. We have seen Corey Redding all over this football field today. Yeah, there's no substitute for pure speed around the corner. This is something that every NFL team wants, is a guy that can be an edge rusher and get heat on the quarterback. You affect the quarterback, you affect the football game. So all of a sudden, a game that was lopsided in favor of LSU goes back to Texas on one big defensive play by Corey Reddick. Dusty Mangum with the extra point. An LSU turnover caused by Reddick, and Jackson races the other way to Pater. Texas getting a 46 yard fumble recovery return for a touchdown by Jackson. And in a game, as Tim mentioned a moment ago, completely thoroughly dominated by LSU. They're on the short end of a 7-3 game. You know what I think was big there on that drive is the penalty because that pushed LSU back and they were looking at a third and 11. And I think Randall, he had to hold the ball. He had to feel like he had to push the ball downfield instead of maybe you know, throwing it away. You got a shot at a field goal. Well, they were, they were pretty close. I think the mistake, Ronnie, was, you know, they knew that Corey Redding was going to be a handful. And I, I think they need to give their tackle some help. Dominic Davis from the three. And a penalty flag comes flying in from midfield. That was a heck of a toss. Yeah, you, you took the words right out of my wow. mouth. That's major hang time on that flag. Holding against the Tigers. Holding during the return, 10 yards into the run. First down. 3.40 to play, opening quarter here at the 67th Annual SBC Cotton Bowl Classic 7-3, Texas. The SBC Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Let's go, let's go. 
We hear so much about it during the regular season. We never have a chance to do college football until this Cotton Bowl, but the color, the pageantry, the enthusiasm is just terrific. Field slips across the 15 out to the 17, tripped up by Roderick Wright, the freshman out of Houston. I think this is a good chance now to see what Marcus Randall can do with this offense. How much of a leader can he be? You know, they go from being in control of everything to all of a sudden one play and they're down, and they're killing Texas in terms of time of possession. They have held the ball the entire game, and he's going to have to put a drive here. Texas still without a single yard on offense. One. Stay on the ground. A big hole for Tofield. A first down out to the 29. Well, Tofield Pearson the tackle. Tofield gets an excellent hole from his offensive line. Watch him take this. And again, it's right at the Texas defense. Look at that hole. Opens up beautifully. Then the power takes over, and he knocks the defensive defensive backs around like bowling pins. Easy on those DBs now. You know, <laughs> Tofield was the guy. He was the starter in the beginning of the year. He broke his arm, went out for four weeks, and luckily they had Davis. But they think Tofield is the better of the two backs. Play fake to Tofield this time. Randall rolling right, looking down the field. He'll take it himself and picks up close to eight yards. For more on the injury a moment ago to Eric Edwards, let's go downstairs to Brian Baldinger. Uh, thanks, Tom. Yeah, Eric Edwards has a left knee sprain. They've taken him into the locker room. They're going to fit him with the brace. They think he's going to be all right, and he should return uh, later on in the game. Kendall Bryles delivering that hit. That was a play after Pearson had been yanked out of the game by head coach Mac Brown following that personal foul that allowed LSU's drive to continue. Second and a yard. Not sure Tofield made it. Terrific tackle coming up from a strong safety position by Michael Huff. And that's a great example of how you use your strong safety to get an extra man in the box. That time Huff came up and he timed it perfectly. They showed cover two, which means two deep safeties, and you keep five underneath. But watch right here. At the last second, he comes up, and that's where he's got to fit. You're counting on that man as a defensive coordinator to make that tackle. That's the one man that the offense can't pick up, and he makes a great play. Third in the foot. And again, not sure if Tofield was able to get there. Derek Johnson came up to chop him down. Depending on the spot here as to whether or not this Tiger drive will continue. It is a first down. Talked about Mac Brown. What a job he has done since coming to Texas. This is his fifth season. 48 wins, 15 losses over the last two years. The only two teams that have won more games in college football, Miami and Oklahoma. Mac said it was really important for his team to win this game so that this class of seniors would go out as winners and people would realize that they were responsible for bringing this Texas program back. Wide open downfield again. It's Michael Clayton, and he beat Vasher. I tell you what, he beat Vasher, but you can't throw the ball any better than Marcus Randall does on this play right here. That ball was dropped in there perfectly, and Randall took a shot after he threw it. And the thing Clayton does is he works well across the field. He recognizes man or zone, and he knows he's got to keep running away from Vasher. And I'm surprised Vasher just looked like he expected help. Or, or there was some, some confusion in the secondary. That, that, that didn't look right. See how perfectly that ball was laid in there, though? I had one general manager earlier this week tell me that Clayton, when it's all said and done, he will be as good as, if not better, than Eric Moulds up in Buffalo. That's quite a compliment. Clayton only a sophomore at 51 receptions during the season. This time they go to Skyler Green. We talked about getting the ball in his hands. And he's down to the 35. 
close to another first down. Skyler Green, a true freshman. He didn't play in six games this year, but I tell you one thing, when you line up on this kid, you better have your track shoes on because he can go. And once again, LSU has come down the field. We talked about will Randall be able to respond to that big play, and he has. They're right down the field again. And has anybody seen Chris Sims? Is he still in the building? Well, he, he, they were only out three plays, but you know, Nick Saban told us if, if Marcus Randall plays well, we're going to be in this ball game. And Marcus Randall is playing extremely well, and LSU, although they're down, is very much in this ball game. LSU spending its first time out here in the first half. While we have a moment, we'd like to remind you it's back to the NFL this Sunday. The second season begins with round one of the NFL playoffs. Gary Collins and the New York Giants. Visit 3Com Park in San Francisco to battle the 49ers. Coverage of the NFC Wild Card playoff begins Sunday, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, only on Fox Sports. All right, you guys have seen the NFL all year long. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Thank you. Who do you like in the NFC, and well, who do you like in the AFC? I like the Giants in that game right there because they are on a roll. 7-2 and two since Jim Fossil knew his job was on the line. He took over the play calling. Giants are, are very hot right now, and I, I think Absolutely. they go into San Francisco. San Francisco win that game right yeah you know I think they do too they're just playing so well and as you say ever since Fossil took over the play calling it's been a different situation and they're one of those teams that, you know if you're going to do well in the postseason you have to start playing well from the middle of December on in that's those are, and you, stay healthy you know who I like in the whole NFL and I'm not saying it just because we're down here south of the Mason Dixon line I like the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans. they have won 10 out of their last 11 they yeah. are on a roll yeah what a year for Steve McNair. Of course, doesn't even practice during the week, and then uh, when that red light comes on, he is at his best. Randall trying to add another 95 yards of passing, and he'll just hang on to it. Very wise decision making by Marcus Randall, but he is limping. He's hurt as he crosses. Looks like he's going to walk it off. Maybe a cramp? I don't know. Reed Boyd gave him a shot. He may have given him a cramp. I think he's all right. And that might be Texas' best shot because Randall, when he gets out of the pocket, I mean, he's killing him on defense. Looks like he got our cameraman. You got to stay low on the sideline. Boyd knocked out the quarterback and the camera. Got to bend your knees and stay low. Keep your head on the swivel <laughs> down there. Even if you're, even if you just got a handheld. <laughs> Tackled after maybe a gain of two. Again, Roderick Wright, another freshman. Boy, they have so many youngsters for this Texas team that are getting a chance to play in either their true freshman year or as a redshirt freshman. Well, he's one of those guys, Tommy. We talked about Texas being a lighter, faster defense, built for speed, man-to-man -man coverage, you know, shooting the gaps. But Roderick Wright is he's one of the big guys. I mean, he is 320 pounds. And as you said, he's just a freshman. A huge upside and a huge grocery bill. <laughs> His Uncle Elbow, a fabulous wide receiver at the University of Houston, their all-time leader in receiving yards and touchdowns. Randall, wide open. Tofi, touchdown. Minus the one big turnover. Well, Brandon Tofield does double duty on this play here because, first of all, he helps with the protection. Watch him here, and he gets a little bit of a chip on Corey Redding. Remember, Redding on the last third down situation here is the guy who comes up with the sack and the fumble. And then he turns around, so after he kind of knocks Redding off, 
He turns around and makes his tackle. Watch it right here. Just gives him enough just to keep Redding outside and out of the quarterback's face. And Marcus Randall is just having a day. Seven for eight, 116 yards, one touchdown. And I got to give some credit, guys, to Jimbo Fisher, the LSU offensive coordinator. You know, I talked to him briefly yesterday at the luncheon. He says, I'm going to have something special for this Texas team that nobody really knows about. I think what that is is he's spreading them out. And he's getting Marcus Randall out of the pocket. A lot of formations, and he's using, using the backs in different ways outside of just eye formation pound football. Everyone thought that LSU was going to have to pound the ball at this lighter Texas D. Now, they've yeah. done that. But, Ronnie, as you said, they've also thrown the ball extremely well, and I don't think anyone could have predicted that Marcus Randall would play this well. Absolutely. Wow. Shot in the arm. Hammered at the 25-yard line. And if LSU didn't believe they could come in here and beat Texas, they do now. And the longer this game stays close, it's going to be harder and harder for the Longhorns. Schofield, the touchdown. Ryan O'Neill delivered that smashing in a moment ago into the first quarter. 10-7, LSU. Is brought to you by Cadillac. Bull vehicles defying convention. By HP. HP technology services and people help make more things more possible. By Dr. Pepper. And your local Dr. Pepper bottler, BU. Nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. And by Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. For a while there, it looked like uh, Michael Clayton was going to stay and play a little defense. Well, they had him out there. And if Texas had come out with three wides, he was going to play. He's got four catches for 67 yards on offense. And Chris Sims' arm has to be cold by now all the time he's been on the bench. A grand total of three offensive plays to the Longhorns in the entire first quarter. And they begin the second quarter with a big time run by Cedric Benson. <laughs> Chopped down by Jack Hunt out to the 38-yard line first down. I think... I think it's a big time run, not only because he gets a first down, <laughs> but, but what he does to Jack Hunt. He's got a little something for Jack Hunt. <laughs> Everybody's got a little something for Jack Hunt. Now, Jack Hunt is a guy that came in and replaced Damian James, who was suspended early in the year. And he's going through his times back there at free safety. Well, back to Longhorns, think sooner or later they can get one on him. Well, I like the way Jack Hunt throws himself around. He got though. in there. He's not gonna, he, he's not gonna let you know he's not out there to hit. Small hole brings it out to the 44 yard line. Benson, a two sports star, drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers in last year's baseball draft in the 12th round, played in rookie league at Barrow Beach last summer. And a big decision for him during this upcoming offseason. Mac Brown wants him to be a football player. He says, no, 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 no. I, I'm not really saying that, but you got that feeling. Well, he said he can play baseball, but he's got to come back. He's got to also do the weight training and if he's going to play the baseball at the same time. Yeah, he lightened up a little bit. Didn't uh, keep as much of that muscle mass on him as Mac Brown would have liked. And then he just fell down there on a second down carry, losing a half yard. I mean, you're talking about a, an electrifying runner. When healthy is Benson, the three-time 5A Texas High School Offensive Player of the Year. Rush for 8,400 yards, 127 touchdowns in high school. They know who he is in the state of Texas. Michael Clayton is out now playing defense. We said just a moment ago he's already got four catches, 67 yards on offense. Sims guns it to the outside. Out of the hands of Roy Williams. And just like that, the Texas offense off the field. They had the big carry by Benson. The next three plays back to the sideline. And I know what Matt Brown tried to do there. He came out, tried to put the ball on the ground to settle everyone down. 10-7, you can stay in your game plan, but those three and outs are going to make him change his game plan real fast. We have talked about Sims here and his play in this Cotton Bowl stadium. Was never able to beat Oklahoma. In fact, had two of his worst games ever against the Sooners on this field. And then the other big game they talk about here in Texas, the Big 12 championship game last year.
When you're talking football in Texas, nothing is bigger. Some would say it's bigger than religion. Of course, that's being a little overboard. But for Chris Sims, the scrutiny he's come under, we talked about last season, four interceptions in the Oklahoma game here, three in the Big 12 championship game, and then another loss and three interceptions this year to the Sooners. I think right now the biggest thing he has to fear is, you know, fear itself. Not to quote, you know, quote a great man, but he just needs to be calm and patient because they're still very much in this football game. They've got nothing going, but he still has a high-powered offense, and if he just settles down, they can get right back into it. Collision as both defensive back and wide receiver went down. No penalty flag. Jarrell Meyer saying, you've got to be kidding. He got tangled up with Rod Babers. Myers was trying to take Babers on that post corner route take him all the way to the sidelines and about 20 yards deep there they are right there and you know what Babers does reach out and grab him he got away with one there is a DB got out there trust me you get arrested for that outside the stadium comes the speed all the way down to the 15. Vasher ran him down. And Randall's angle obviously still bothering him. I don't know if he would have made that John or not. 75 big ones. Well, and it was a great run by Randall and excellent speed. But watch the design of this play and look at this whole block open up. Look at the blocking downfield. It's fabulous play by LSU. Good play by the offensive line and in the, that nice speed. And that's amazing because he runs away from Dakari Pearson, who I know can run. And if it's not for Vasher, Randall will go into the touch, going for the touchdown. 75-yard run. Now they come back to Dominic Davis, and he is wrapped up in the tent by Reed Boyd, the Longhorns' leading tackler. The thing I worry about now for Randall is his ankle or knee or whatever is bothering him because that's twice now he's come up limping on that on that leg. And as we pointed out earlier, like, that doesn't look like a very good tape job either. You know what I mean? I mean, that's a low tape. Seriously, that's a low tape job on his ankle. And that's not a very good time of possession job by the long ones. Well, look at the yard. I'll, I'll be surprised if you don't see him go getting some more tape on one of those ankles. He's supposed to be their quick guy. He blasts through the Texas defense for the lead. The SBC Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is brought to you by SBC. Ordinary people, extraordinary job. Guys, what a surprise so far, Rod, here yeah. and Tim. Uh, in the first quarter and three plus minutes of the Cotton Bowl. And you know, at first you might have thought, well, LSU just, they had a nice couple breaks there, start out easy, and you know, it's, it's, it's not much of a game right now, but I gotta tell you, they're pouring it on. They're putting together drives. They were in the hole there after the big touchdown on the hit by Redding, and they're doing everything a team has to do. Well, except for that Corey Redding, Force fumble it's, and the Lee Jackson touchdown. Texas has looked almost asleep. This has turned into the SBC Randall, Marcus Randall top bowl. Levin Williams still on his feet and is finally knocked out of bounds all the way out of the 37 yard line. Nick Saban 
This team had its ups and downs this season, winding up 8-4. and four. It was a tough year with injuries and a suspension to Damian James, but he felt this was a great honor and a big game for his program to come to the Cotton Bowl. Oh, it's great for the program anytime you get a New Year's Day bowl game, and uh, we're very pleased that this is the first time in a long time that LSU has been able to get in back-to-back -back New Year's Day bowl games, and uh, we don't have any players on our team who have lost a bowl game. We've been able to win two in a row, and uh, this is certainly a, a large test for us, though, against the University of Texas. In the First down throw by Sims, and the catch is made by the freshman tight end, David Thomas, close to midfield. Big play right there, and a much-needed play for Sims and the Longhorns. Right, Chris Sims gets outside the pocket where he can see the field. Things open up. He's got a wide-open receiver. Nice, easy ball, and that's just what he needs. You're right, Tom. He needs to just settle down, play his game, because don't forget, this is still the Texas offense. They've got a lot of firepower. 23-yard gain out to the 49. There's Williams. There's Williams. Williams. One man to beat. Touchdown, Texas. Corey Webster got beat one on one. He missed the jam. And when you're a cornerback, if you're up there to jam, you've got to get it. It is your weapon. Ron, and we talked about the importance of having two guys on Roy Williams. This time, there's only one. And once he gets past Corey Webster, it's all over. You talk about high-powered Texas right back in it. And a great throw by Chris Sims. And that's what we were talking about in the open with Williams, a downfield long strider. He's deceptive, but he's also got the great quickness, and he showed it there against Webster. Dusty Mangum, the point after. So Chris Sims finding his favorite target and saying to the LSU defense, hey, I'm ready to go. LSU's late great head coach Charles McClendon made his postseason debut in the 1963 Cotton Bowl Classic, and the Tigers rewarded him with a shutout of previously unbeaten Texas. Then three years later, the Tigers upset second-ranked Arkansas behind bruising halfback Joe Labruzzo. LSU has never lost here in the Cotton Bowl Classic. 2-0-1 all-time. They're one tie, two Arkansas. A scoreless game during that ice storm back in 1947. Last year, LSU beat Illinois in the Sugar Bowl. The year before, they beat Georgia Tech in the Peach Bowl. Both of those games upsets. And on first down, Texas will start on the ground. The Longhorns struck quickly their last offensive series on a touchdown pass from Sims to Williams. Get a look at what Chris Sims and company have done so far. You know, we will talk a great deal about Sims and about his college career throughout the game here today. The bottom line is he's 25 and 6 as a starter. That's the bottom line, and only two quarterbacks have won more games as a Longhorn quarterback, Bobby Lane and Marty Aiken. And those first two series that were three and out didn't, didn't upset him at all. Came right back with a beautiful touchdown pass. Big hit delivered on Young. And look at that. That's Clayton. Now, there you go. You know, that's why a lot of the scouts in the NFL can't wait for Clayton to come out. You talk about versatile players. The guy comes out in the beginning of the game and catches the first two or three balls, and now he's coming down the pipe making big hits. Tell you the one guy, though, they'll be watching uh, in the national championship game. Two-way player starts both ways, plays every play. Chris Gamble of Ohio State. is if you can do that playing on defense you know as a receiver you got a physical guy that'll go up and rip right. the ball away from the defensive backfield yeah that's pretty amazing to me though there's a lot going on back there in your head as a safety Sims threw it too hard for his tight end Brock Edwards you know you just can't line up back there there's guys that play back there for four years straight and when it's all said and done, they're still not good enough to go pro. Clayton can do it on the receiver standpoint, standby, and then go back here and play defensive back. Well, that's, that's hey, Ronnie, how many, how many 
receivers did you know did you play against that could have gone and played defense and make a hit like we saw Clay make on that last play? None. Yeah. None. And now he's got to he's got to learn a whole new set of adjustments back there. He's got to line up the defense. Second and ten inside handoff goes to Benson and read beautifully by Brady James. First time we've called his name. The first team All American. And Tim, like yourself, coming out of Syracuse, a national scholar athlete. Well, Brady James competes on the field and he competes off the field. Look at his eyes right there and watch him sort that thing out. And Tommy, he studies hours and hours of film. And he said, look, Nick Saban is the guy. He taught me how to study film. He taught me how to learn tendencies. And you better believe that that skill will carry right over into the National Football League. Big third down play for Texas. The play clock may have expired on Chris Sims. Well, this is the situation Texas wanted to keep Chris Sims out of. Third and long, and you know the blitz is coming. Third and snap. False start. Offense. Five yards penalty. Still third down. I wonder if that wasn't against Roy Williams. It was right in front of the official who dropped the flag right at his feet. Well, that's exactly what Corey Webster was pointing to. He pointed to Roy Williams. Check it out here. There, there it is. LSU now, they got smart after that big burn on the touchdown by Williams. They're disguising the coverages. Trying to show Sims one coverage and at the last minute come down to something else. Still a third and eight, third and 13 now for Sims. Throws and overthrows his intended receiver, B.J. Johnson. So with a chance to recapture, if you will, the momentum of this game, Texas will head to the sideline and punt it away. And it's a good thing for LSU that Sims didn't look backside because Williams shook Webster again. Well, I, I think it's a mistake by Texas not to look backside because I, this guy, we can't say enough about how talented he is as a receiver. And I, I just think you're in a critical situation. You got to go to your money. Uh, you're absolutely right. Punted straight up in the air. This might not go 10 yards. I do believe Bebo could punt that ball better. <laughs> well, we know one thing. Bebo would have a little more beef behind it. Look at the old boy. Head hanging a little low early on. They're down three. The big news is television season is that America's number one pregame show is taking its act of prime time. You heard that right. Saturday, January 18th. It's Fox NFL Saturday night. JB, Terry, Howie, Jimmy, along with Jillian and Jimmy Kimmel grab the spotlight for what promises to be one of TV's more entertaining hours. Fox NFL Saturday night, January 18th, 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific only on Fox. You know, we, we joke about the punt, but the bottom line is look at the great field position once again for LSU. And they've already had drives in the Tigers of 87 and 90 yards in this game. Don't have to go that far here. They swing it out to the right side and a cut back down to the 25 is Skylar Green. Boy, you have to be impressed with Marcus Randall's cool. Texas lined up. They showed the blitz. They knew he knew they were coming off the play side. And he just hung in there and lofted it right over the blitzer's head. You know, guys, uh, we, we talked about this uh, uh, watching film the last couple of days. I am shocked at how good this LSU offense has played so far in this game. Well, you agree? You guys know a lot yeah, more about it than I do. It's because of Marcus Randall. I mean, they're, they're, it, it you is. don't have to it go is. any further than that. Now, you know, he's got the arm, and he's got the size, but he's got the mobility to tie it all together. He's got Ready. a fly down. Able to slow down Davis. And then he's tripped up. Penalty flags on the field. Derek Johnson credited with the tackle. Waiting on Gerald Wright, our referee. Legal motion. It's decline. Third down. Mark 
Marcus Randall, only a sophomore. I mean, he is taking his claim right now, saying, hey, when we come back next year in the spring yeah. and in the fall, I plan on being the starting quarterback. Consistent with what Nick Saban talked about, what this game means to them. This is about next year and our future. We're down. Waits on his receiver. Was the catch made by Clayton or not? saying yes. Yes is the call. First down, LSU to the 20. I'll tell you what, I have seen this week, Michael Clayton makes some beautiful catches on film. Look at this, none better than that. That ball is thrown behind him and Look low. He, he caught it with one hand. It. Watch it, here he comes. He's gonna run just this little slant to the inside. There's a small window, and I'll wow. tell you what, he talk about Marcus Randall and, and solidifying himself at the quarterback position. When you got receivers that make those kind of catches, it makes it a lot easier to be solid. And hey, kudos to the officiating crew. That's a second tough call they've had to make it both up right on the nose. Davis will get it. Maybe gained a yard, wrapped up by Adam Dorn, the junior out of Duncan, Oklahoma. It is hard to believe when you look at those numbers that it's a three-point spread. It's also hard to believe that it's the LSU offense that's got that many yards, 300 over 300 yards, still time to play in the first half and Texas only has 104. Texas the ninth ranked Longhorns were the ones with the potent offense coming into this game. Second and nine Davis in motion and they bring him back on the inside and he maybe got a yard maybe not even that much played beautifully defensively by Texas and Cedric Griffin a red shirt freshman. Well, Cedric Griffin has seen this play run a couple times today, and instead of playing off, he <laughs> stayed right up tight to his man, and when his man came down the line of scrimmage, he just got right in his back pocket. Cedric Griffin plays that nickel spot. He should match up very well with a running back. That's where he should play along the line. Third and nine. This is where you got to look to Michael Clayton. More wideouts in the game. They're going to have to go man coverage. They're coming after Randall. He lets it fly and threw it behind the intended receiver. And there's another example we just talked about, Cedric Griffin. Cedric Griffin, once again, and Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator system, a spin-down guy. He's a safety, but they use him as a nickel corner. That gives the defense flexibility to lock up man-to-man -man and not change into zone coverages whenever the offense gives you a spread formation. This will be a 37-yard attempt. Corbello has not missed inside of 40 all year long. And does so for the first time. That's a big turn away by the Texas D guys because if they get another three points there, it's just that momentum thing. And now you feel the momentum coming back a little bit to Texas. Well, hey, Texas D clamped right down, too. Yes, they did. Don't forget, they had the bad punt. Their offense was pinned down. They had the bad punt. LSU gets it right into Texas territory. But they, they needed to keep LSU from getting points on the board every time they go down the field. And that seems like what it's been for LSU. Saw big Stevie Lee. He's fired up for this one. Number 65 of the Longhorns. He's a native of Louisiana. Out of Shreveport. Left there to come to the Longhorns. Three fifty-six to play here in the first half. Texas was all three of its timeouts. Dangerous throw and batted down by Brady James. He had the coverage of Brock Edwards. Let's go downstairs to Brian Baldinger. Yeah, Tom, I've been down here for the whole first half, and an exciting first half it is. The fans in the lower bowl here have not sat down once during the timeouts, the breaks, anything. They are excited to be out here on a beautiful day out here in Dallas. Well, Baldy, let me ask you, if you had a chance to sit down, you're a big man. you got to take a load off every now and again. No, I don't want to sit down. This is too good. <laughs> Our man, Baldy. He's something, isn't he? He has big time here and big D. down until after midnight. <laughs> Second down and 10. Sims, short drop. Fires to Williams. How about that catch? Broke a tackle to the 40, to the 30, the 20. Still tiptoes, dives. Did he get in? No signal given by the official. 
And they will say he went out of bounds at the five. And you know, it, it keeps starting at the same place it started on the touchdown. At the line of scrimmage with Corey Webster. He's beating him right off the gun. Well, you have to ask yourself, why not just every offensive play? You can't cross over and get him covered. Now, he's got help inside, but now they miss tackles. Why not go to Roy Williams every play? I mean, he's unbelievable. Did you see him make that catch? It wasn't even a good pass. He has to reach behind himself to make that catch. Then he does it, pulls it down, and then he does this. And you see, run after the he's catch. got the long arms. You see the strength there. I the, see everything. The guy reminds me so much of Randy Moss. It's unbelievable. Yeah, on the field, but not off the field. Absolutely. They give it to Benson, cuts it back. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown. And Texas recaptures the lead. Now one signal said touchdown, and now the official one given by the referee. We had two different officials signal touchdown, but perhaps that's not the case. On the field, was down prior to breaking the play in the end zone, so it's second down and goal. Still a nice run here by Cedric Benson. He makes the cut, he gets low, gets his shoulders low. Drive, sir. I think that was a good call by the official. I don't, I don't think he quite got in. Yeah, that ball hasn't crossed the plane. Second and goal. And this time, he's in. It is a touchdown. Benson is 12th rushing touchdown of the season to put the Longhorns back in front. But Roy Williams was the guy who really put the Longhorns back in front with another spectacular pass play. Talk about an impact player, right? Cool. I mean, he catches the first touchdown pass. How about the catch? He takes that one to length. Right, how about the catch we saw at practice the other day? He, he made one of those Randy Moss behind your back. Well, he said he doesn't have to look at the ball to catch it. You know, I, after I saw that catch in practice, I believe it because he, he kind of does that here. Watch him here. Watch where this ball's thrown. Behind him, he's, he's twisted around. He comes sideways. He makes that catch. And then what he does after the catch, that's kind of, you know, you talk Randy Moss with his hands, but then you think Terrell Owens with the run after the catch. Did you see what he did there? He switched hands with the ball in between tacklers. Okay, that, that's technically a no-no, fundamentally, but that's something that the great ones do. And here's a guy that the coaches, they want him to catch 200 balls in practice, and he says, I don't catch any. I guess he doesn't need to, uh, at least not right now. I'm not going to argue with him. And he's really had to battle through so many injuries, most notably a, a hamstring injury where he didn't tell the coaches all year long he wasn't at 100%. Yet he had 11 touchdown receptions, a Texas school record. And you know, that's a great point, Tom, because in the Oklahoma game, right here in the Cotton Bowl, his hamstring was hurt. And he had a big play in the first quarter, but they lost him the rest of the game. He just wasn't a factor. And I think that was a, played a big part in Texas losing that game. There's no question. I mean, it, it, without Roy Williams, 100%. <laughs> Texas is a whole different offense. Like taking away Michael Vick from the Atlanta Falcons. 45 seconds to score that touchdown for the Longhorns. It took and Dominic Davis. The SEC's all-time kickoff return and punt return yardage leader brings it out to the 34. Coming up at halftime, we'll listen in to both bands, LSU and the University of Texas marching bands. And we'll have scores and highlights from other bowl games taking place today. I haven't seen a score, but I would find it very hard to believe there is any other bowl being played right now or maybe through the rest of the bowl season that's had a better quarter and 12 minutes than we've had here today. You're absolutely right, partner. I've known you for nine years. That's the first time you've ever said I'm right. Marcus Randall. I say it under my breath a lot. Off balance and then just throws it away as he hits the deck. We get a look at the 
total yards. LSU, a stunning 309. 75 of those 185 for Texas came on one play to Williams a moment ago. Get the Longhorns lead on the scoreboard. Well, they lead, don't forget, they had the Lee Jackson fumble return for a touchdown, so that gave them seven points right there. And then two huge Roy Williams pass plays resulted in the other two touchdowns. Full field, broke one tackle, couldn't break the next one. The only adjustment I want to know about going in at halftime for LSU defensively is what are you going to do now to stop Roy Williams? I mean, you've got to change this thing up. I understand what they're trying to do, but Webster has struggled so much technique-wise, and once Williams catches the ball, the, the, the yak yardage, as we say, it, is just killing Texas. Excuse me, killing LSU. I don't know how much more you can do, Ronnie. You, you've got a, you've got a, your most physical cornerback up and pressing him, and with a safety over the top, that's all you can do. You can't put three men up. Maybe you can. <laughs> Maybe you should. Third and nine. Great protection. Wow, ran away. Really overthrows Clayton, who was open. You know, that's the first bad pass we've seen from Marcus Randall all day. And I wonder if that calf isn't starting to affect his throwing. We've seen some low balls, and that's one of the thing that can, things that can happen to you. You hurt the leg, and the ball tends to take off on you as a quarterback because you can't step into it when you try to go down the field. And you guys brought it up earlier. He tore his ACL in the right knee during the spring game last year, had to rehab all summer. They didn't think he'd be back for six months. He was back in four. And then wound up the starting quarterback. There's a line driver. Great punt. And it will go into the end zone. Texas will get it in the 20. All three of its timeouts left. And a minute 58 to play until halftime. Well, we've talked about Roy Williams and what he's done for this Texas team. They started out the game, and the LSU defense right there, Corey Webster, got into him a little bit. Well, you can only get into him so long without help. That time, he's isolated man-to-man, -man, catches the slant from Sims, touchdown. This one here, he's got the double coverage, he beats the coverage, and then he beats the rest of the defense all the way down the sideline to set up the touchdown. He's only it's averaging 62 yards per catch. Right, right, you know, you can, you can live with that. But the thing is that Texas has realized they've got to start going to him, and things didn't get better in this game for Texas until they started going to him. I thought it was interesting what Chris said about, you know, being the son of Phil Sims, former NFL quarterback that we all know. And he said there were times when I'd walk out in the field and I, all I was concerned about was what dad thought up in the stand. So I wasn't focusing on the defense or what I had to do as a quarterback. You know, that was a big transition to get away from that kind of mindset. Well, I love the way he said that his dad never pushed him to the game of football. And it all, it all came from him. He said he was the one who wanted to be a football player. His dad never pushed him, but uh, his dad means a lot to him, right? Yeah. He helps him with the film study. And I, I think that when you talk about Chris Sims, first of all, he's a wonderful young man. But when you talk about him playing in the NFL, you know he's got mental toughness because he's gone through the tough crowds. He's gone through the tough media. And you also know he knows how to prepare for a football game. He takes that film home. He studies it up one side and down the other. Been very but difficult when, on this turf at the Cotton Bowl Stadium. You see uh, Sims, his team's record. He started three of those four. But when they come to play here, things have not gone well. Well, I'll tell you what, though. They but they started out this game by right, right, and and they've been behind. And, I, and I've, I've, I'm impressed at the way he's kind of kept his composure. He hasn't gotten too excited. He hasn't forced anything. He hasn't come up with a turnover. And you know. You give Roy Williams the credit, but Chris Sims delivered the ball, especially on that slant right. pass, the no, first no, no, touchdown. No, no, no. He's got to find him, and he's got to deliver. Roy Williams has come back on after sitting out the first play of this drive. Second down and three for the Longhorns in their own 27. Blitz coming, and they get to Sims. And he was looking right at Roy Williams again. Looks like they had a hitch and go on, but the pressure got there. Byron Dawson with a sack. Well, Byron Dawson is in his mouth right away. Watch Dawson right here. Look at that. No one blocks him. 
So that's a mistake up front on the protection. And Sims is lucky just to hang on to that ball. Third and 11. Here they come again. Sims drops it off over the middle. Catches made. First down all the way out to the 37 yard line. LSU brought one off the corner. Yeah, well done by Sims, right? That's right. They he decided knew. to bring, and that's another good thing about Sims from a pro standpoint, what the college or the pro scouts are looking for. Does he know where to go with the football when pressure comes, when blitz comes? Because that's the biggest problem that quarterbacks have when they get into the NFL. David Thomas, a freshman tight end, made that catch. Now Sims escapes trouble, is able to drop it off out of the backfield, but a loss of one. Clock continues to run. Brady James mixing it up there. Red Robin made the catch there and is slow to get up. Sims and James having a few words. For Sims, when he threw that first touchdown, he got in the face of a couple of the LSU defenders taunting the LSU sideline a bit. You got to admire his passion and his enthusiasm. But if you're going to do that, when they have a chance to take a shot, they're coming at you the other way. Tim, you know how these bowl games go. You get different conferences, and you know one team is used to hearing about how great another team is for 12 weeks, and they got the month off. Things can fester a little bit. Things will be festering uh, in some other games. I think you've got. I week. think you've got, a, got one of these chess matches between. Brady James and Chris Sims because the LSU defense today wanted to get into Chris Sims head. They wanted to mix up their coverages. They wanted to shift their defenses around. They wanted to put pressure on Chris Sims and get him out of his game. And Chris Sims on the other hand knew that Brady James was going to be changing that defense right, around. He right. wanted to be patient. He wanted to get a feel for this defense and what they were going to be doing to him. And I, and I think both of them have done a good job. You know, it's been a back and forth battle. LSU had the edge early, but Sims has come back well, and but he's come back by getting the ball in the hands of four, number four, Roy Williams. And I think that's exactly what you want to do on this play here. There's Roy Williams right there being covered by Corey Webster, and there's no safety over the top. Williams is going up the field, and Sims is not even looking that way. Drops it off to Benson out of the backfield, trying to get out of bounds. And along the sideline, able to beat Hunt, but Hunt then trips up. Benson all the way down to the 18-yard line. Clock continues to run. It will when they get the chains set for first down. 30 seconds, seven, uh, seven seconds left. And he didn't have to look at Williams on that play. When you've got a man that wide open, skirting underneath the zone, you've got to get him the football. Well, I was watching Roy Williams, and I saw Roy Williams yeah. throw a block. <laughs> Uh, Corey Webster <laughs> that turned that play that doubled yeah. the length of that play. They said that Benson stepped out of bounds at the 29 yard line. So now Sims looking for Williams. Batted away. That's a nice play there by Webster. And it's a nice play because he knew where the ball was and he got himself in between the ball and Williams. Well, Webster used to be a wide receiver. And so when the ball goes up in the air against Corey Webster, you know, he he thinks like a wide receiver. He goes up for it. I was wrong. This is Sloan Thomas. He had an eye on. That's right. Why would you throw to anybody else for crying out loud besides Williams? I, I wouldn't. Seven interceptions. Let this out. Williams, right now, Williams isn't out on the field. Sims rolls one way, throws back the other way. And a catch is made by David Thomas, and he stays in bounds. The clock continues to run under 20. One timeout left for the Longhorns, and now they will spend it. What a first half. And coming up at halftime, we remind you, we will listen in on two great marching bands from LSU and Texas. And we'll bring you up to date on what else is happening around college football on this busy New Year's Day. Sims throws and the catch is made 
shy of the first down by Johnson. Clock continues to run, and they race the field goal unit out. They may not get this off. Usually it takes about 10 seconds to do it, and they're right at the 10-second mark. Mangum, a 40-yard try. Great discipline. Wow. Did they get it? Goal unit. Just short. It's amazing they even got that one off. That is a sign of a well, well coached team. What a first half here at the 67th annual SBC Cotton Bowl. It's been a very solid first half for Chris Sims, who's had his troubles in this stadium. Let's go downstairs to Brian Baldinger. Mac, uh, three big plays has your team winning this game right now. Can you rely on the big play to win this? Well, Brian, if it works, we can. You've been around this game long enough to know the thing we've got to do is play better defense because we were on the field only three plays on offense the first quarter. Our defense forced the turnover, got a little momentum. We let them have an 80-yard drive. We let them squirt out on the quarterback draw. We've got to force some turnovers. We've got to play defense like we did the last six minutes of the first half, and our offense can move the ball if we stay on the field. Okay, Mac, thank you. See you in the second half. Brian, Coach Brown, thank you very much. Plenty of halftime festivities, the color, the pageantry. The electric atmosphere of the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, 21-17, Texas. You know, I thought we played well offensively in the first half. I think we dominated the line of scrimmage and made some big plays in the passing game. But defensively, we gave them a few big plays. And old number four is a great player, and he made some big plays for them, and we got to do a good, better job against them. As a defensive coordinator, uh, what do you do to Roy Williams here in the second half to prevent those big plays from happening? Well, every time he made a big play, we played him one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and all the rest of the times that we rolled up on him and kept two guys back, uh, we did okay. And we're just going to have to have a lot more patience. Good luck to you in the second half, Coach. All right, Tommy, back up to you. Ryan, thank you very much. And, fellas, that's exactly what you guys talked about before we ever kicked off today, We're figuring they would double up on Roy Williams. The times they didn't, he only taught two passes the entire first half, but 126 yards on the two. That's right, and the only time, like Nick Saban said, that they've had trouble is when they played him pure man-to-man. -man. They're going to get him more help this time around. Well, you can bet on that. But on the other side of the ball, I think LSU offensively, saw a huge performance from quarterback Marcus Randall. I think yeah. he outperformed what anyone expected from him in this game, and he did it with a combination of throwing the ball. He found he found his uh, uh, running backs. He found receivers downfield. He took the big hits, and then when things broke down, Ronnie, he took the ball in his own hands and had some pretty big run plays to help LSU move the ball down the field and score points. Absolutely. 86 yards rushing. Now, we know that he hurt his ankle or his calf muscle, and that kind of has affected him a little bit, but the guy has been awesome in every phase of the game. Speaking of awesome, Ronnie, on the other side, and we talked about it a little bit, but just take a look, folks, at what Roy Williams did in this first half. And Tommy, you mentioned it, 126 yards. He started out the game a little rough. Corey Webster got in his face, banged him around, but you can only do that so long before this guy, who's an incredible talent, Bust loose. Chris Sims throws the, throws the slant pass for the touchdown. And then on this pass here, this is all Williams. He catches it behind himself. The run after the catch was extraordinary. And I know what LSU is trying to do. They're trying to jam him at the line, slow him down, and then put a safety over the top. But as I keep saying, the problem started at the line of scrimmage. You have to be better on your technique. You got to stay in front of him and get something on this guy. See, when you say line of scrimmage, I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> you know, the hog. I'm thinking uh, offensive line, but defensive line. You're talking about line of scrimmage, Corey Webster versus Roy Williams on the line of scrimmage. That's right, baby. This is out there on that island where nobody can help you. Out there, yeah. <laughs> the Longhorns will get the football to begin the second half. For Bello, a long line drive. And it's taken by Young, who crosses a 30 and He's out to the 35-yard line. Let's take a look at some of the numbers from the opening half. Clearly dominated in a total yard standpoint, first down standpoint by LSU, but they trade. Well, the big factor that we that we haven't mentioned yet was Corey Redding, the sack for the fumble. Lee Jackson returns that for Texas's first touchdown. That's the difference in this game. The time of possession. That started out that way, and it stayed that way the entire first half. Chris Sims, I really think Texas is lucky you know, to be up right now for the amount of time that they've been on the field. Well, they've come up with the big plays to Roy Williams when they've needed. 
Sims hit on 9 of 15 in the opening half, 202 yards and a touchdown to Williams. They start things on the ground and wrestle down is Benson by number 94, the sophomore, Marquise Hill. That's just a great play there by Marquise Hill. And, and this front unit for the LSU Tigers, you know, they're big, they're strong, they're physical. You have to believe that Texas has thought that they could run on the outside with these guys, that they could get on the perimeter, and they really haven't been able to do that. That's right. I, I agree with you, Ron. I think LSU has done a nice job on the line of scrimmage on the interior part of the line of scrimmage. In, in interior. Only 25 yards rushing for Benson through the first half and that carry here in the second half. Second down, good protection. Sims drops it off, but dropped by Benson out of the 37-yard line. It'll bring up third down and long for the Longhorns. Well, Chris Sims throws the ball up the center because he sees on the outside that Roy Williams got covered too. Here's Corey Webster, and there's that jam that Ronnie's been talking about all game. Now, Williams gets away from Webster, but there's a safety right there, and that's why he's not worried about it, and that's why Chris Sims goes away from that double coverage. And that was a, a two-man, Tim. The cornerback is going to trail inside. They're going to try to undercut him with the safety up top. When they go with the single coverage down there, that's when Chris Sims is going to want to look up number four. Dangerous throw by Sims there. He felt the pressure. Marquise Hill was giving chase and made him throw it a little quicker than he wanted to. Well, this is the second big play by Marquise Hill that we've seen. First down, he stops the run. Second down, watch him here. Blows right past the guard, gets in Chris Sims' face. Ryan Bradford, the senior out of Lufkin, Texas, to punt, standing in his own 17. And a short punt, Dominic Davis with room. And actually went backwards and wound up losing yards. And looked like the first two guys to get down the field actually overran the ball, and Davis came back to him. First down for Randall and the Tigers. Their first possession of the second half when we return. What if SBC wasn't there to repair your phone service? I'm not touching it. You do it. How would the other companies take care of it? Oh. They don't have repair crews. Oh. About all they have are marketing people. I am not going down in that hole. If the telecommunications industry doesn't change, this could become a reality. And that's not fun. Your phone company, a real phone company, SBC. Watch it my way. Clear. Impressive. Affordable. Thin. Way to go. I love it. You and nine friends could win a trip to the big game on January 26th in San Diego. Purchase a Gateway 42-inch plasma TV or any computer system by January 14th, and you're automatically entered. No purchase necessary. See Gateway Store or Gateway.com for details. By the way, I can do all this with Gateway, a better way. At this late hour, the results seem inevitable. No, 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 no. no. So I'd like to concede the election and congratulate my esteemed opponent, Big Al Lawson. Loser! Yes, I got the power! Winner Michael Chiklis returns in the series that's too intense for network TV. The Shield season premiere next week, only on FX. We lost an American legend this year when Byron Wizard White passed away, famous for his all around performance for Colorado in the 1938 Cotton Bowl. White went on to serve for 31 years on the United States Supreme Court. Sellout crowd here in Dallas just underway in the second half, and it's been a wild one so far. 21-17. Texas in front of LSU, but the Tigers on their first possession of the second half come out throwing. A little screen set up for Dominic Davis. And he is knocked out of bounds after a gain of close to seven, chased down by Reed Boyd. Well, that'll be Reed Boyd's sixth tackle of this game, and, and he's played well. And you talk about Texas being a speed defense. Reed Boyd's been using that speed. He's been all over. 
and he's been all over all year. Leads the team in tackles. Came into today's game with 112. And that's one thing that this defense, this team, has become, especially in the last 10 years, this whole conference has gone from that smash mouth running conference to a speed conference. A lot of speed on the field. A little old time smash mouth football right there. It'll bring a third down and six for the Tigers. Let's send it downstairs to Brian Bolding. Thanks, Tom. I'm with the president and CEO of SBC and John Stanky and John, what a great week in Dallas. Well, you couldn't ask for much more. The SEC and the Big 12 have brought two great teams here today. We've got wonderful weather. Cotton Bowl Association did a great job. It's been fabulous. Why is SBC so committed to this classic? Well, it's about higher education. This generates an awful lot of money back to these universities. Does a good job of bringing in money to the local communities in the North Dallas area. So we think it's a great thing. Three quarters of every dollar go to help these schools, and uh, we like that. That's great, John. And then now you're using this game as a launching pad for your new national brand. That's right. We're now uh, moving out beyond our regions. We're selling products that are more national in nature, like DSL, long distance. Recently just got our long distance approval in California. So our products are much more national in nature, and this gives us a great opportunity to start promoting them and selling to our customers. And we have a great game to boot here, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Tom, back up to you. Brian, thank you very much. A third down attempt. A failed attempt for the LSU Tigers, so three and out on its opening possession, and a fake. They snap the ball to the up man, and Brady James is wrestled down at the 40-yard line. It worked earlier this season for Nick Saban, not this time. I remember right before halftime, we saw how quickly and how disciplined the Texas field goal team was. This is just more excellent coaching, great discipline by the Texas punt return team. This thing never has a chance. Everyone stays in their gap, everyone stays home, and the Texas special teams just bring down Brady James just like it's another day at the office. And I'm not sure I understand why it's important for LSU to do that right now. I mean, this is a close game. They've jumped out to a lead. Texas has fought back. Play a little field position. There's no reason right now with Texas ahead to give them a short field like they just did on that. So now Simpson Company from the 42. They hand it off to Young. And the freshman gets it down to the 37 yard line. Sylvan Young will certainly push Cedric Benson for the lead spotted tailback once spring ball begins. I think Selvin Young is part of. Mac Brown's effort to convince Cedric not to play baseball this summer. Basically say, look, you got a young guy behind you who's competent, who we're willing to give the ball to. And if you're going to play baseball and you're not going to come back stronger than you left school, then Selvin may be part of the part of the answer. Selvin gets it again. And he has a first down to the 24-yard line. And Selvin is a true freshman and you know that's one thing that this program also does well they get young kids on the field early and you see that from other great programs around the country Miami has been known to do that Florida State he gets some nice blocking up front on there but it's the acceleration Ronnie that speed. impressed me now, that crowd's got to be careful saying that about Benson you gotta remember Benson had over 1200 yards rushing this year it's not like he had a bad year Carries for Young, meanwhile, 28 yards, and he stays in the game. First down of the 25, and Sims looking for Williams. John Stover through the diving boy, Williams. And we talked earlier about the adjustment they would make on Williams right off the bat. A little bit of a jam. Now, what that does is it buys time for the safety to get over. You see him coming in late there, but it takes the timing away from the quarterback. Well, and that took exactly, and they say, technically, a jam at the line of scrimmage will take two steps away from the receiver down the field. And I think if Williams had those two steps, he might have made that catch. See, 9 of 18 for Sims. He has started the second half 0 for 3. Wow. They hand it off on the end around, and it'll be a gain of about 7. They hand the ball to the sophomore out of Houston, Texas, Tony Jeffrey. His first carry of the year. Jeffrey, a former 
high school All-American quarterback who's also excelled on special teams this season. He's blocked two punts this year. Well, that was a nice-looking play, and you talk about Sel Selvin Young does a nice job out front getting a block and helping get the edge on this play here. That's why I said, wow, that's a smooth-looking play. And right there, on Selvin. Nice, nice job. He gets out. He uses up two guys. Makes this a short third down. Third and four. Sims fires far side, knocked away. Good coverage by Webster on Williams. Well, I'll tell you, it, it was pretty good coverage, but that ball was thrown back to the inside. Yes, it was. Because that's what enabled Webster to recover and get to the ball. Because Roy Williams had him beat. He ran the out cut, and Roy Williams had him beat to the sideline, but the ball came inside the receiver instead of outside. That's one area where Sims needs to improve it. The accuracy, it's not always there. On the throw. Dusty Mangum on for a 35-yard field goal attempt. He only hit on four of eight from 30 to 39 yards out on the year. And he pulls this one. No good. So after the failed fake punt, LSU lives on. High scoring first half. Both teams slow to get it going here in the second. Coming up this February, NASCAR on Fox returns with the 45th running of the Great American Race at Daytona 500. Tony Stewart leads the world's best drivers, while Mike Joy, Daryl Waltrip, and Larry McReynolds return for another season of high-speed racing and fun. The flag on 15 weeks of NASCAR coverage returns this February only on Fox, and will be just down the road at the end of March at the Texas Motor Speedway for the seventh Winston Cup race of the year, the Samsung Radio Shack. 500 right here on Fox Sports. First down handoff broken up initially by Derek Johnson. Uh, that's great penetration there by Johnson. That's this defense again. It's this is an upfield gap defense. When you've got your linebackers, they're not just reading. They're not just trying to read gaps and read the, read the play as it unfolds. They're penetrating. They're upfield and they're causing disruption in the backfield. There's Mike Huff following it up. He's a safety and he's already behind the line of scrimmage. See this Tiger offense. The scoreboard on his first three drives. Throw there in and out of the hands of Michael Clayton. It'll bring up third down and ten for LSU. Well, Tommy, I said Corey Redding, his sack for the fumble made the difference in the score of this game. LSU answered by putting two guys on him. They bring the tight end to help the tackle, and that's what gives Marcus Randall a little time to throw this ball. Corey Redding, you know, Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator, said to us. He's got a 1960s work ethic. He has a work ethic like no one else. You know, he learned it from his mom. He said, you know, growing up, my mom had three jobs. She always had a pot of coffee on the stove, and she didn't even drink coffee, but she, she drank it to stay awake to work three jobs to take care of me and my brothers and sisters. Randall, the long ball, and overthrew a wide open Jarrell Myers. And that's where the youth is right there. That's just a touch pass. You have to learn to throw that ball, and that's a tougher ball to throw than people think. They see Brett Favre throw it. They see guys like Tom Brady and Kurt Warner. You know, it, it's, well, it we, takes a lot to throw that ball and put it on the money. But, Ronnie, we saw Marcus Randall throw some of those deep balls with touch in the first half, and you said it earlier, he's got that injured calf, and I'm wondering if that's not affecting his throwing mechanics. Vasher drops back to receive the punt. Brings it out to the 46-yard line. That's where Texas will start on its second possession of the second half. The Longhorns lead LSU 21-17. Since 1970, the Longhorns have played the Cotton Bowl, the national title in sight. In 1970, they won a thriller over Notre Dame. The Irish got revenge a year later, upsetting the Horns behind Joe Theismann. Number one, Texas faced Notre Dame for the third time in 78, and the rubber match all Irish. And then in 84, Georgia upset number two, Texas, with a touchdown late in the fourth quarter. Miami that year upset number one, Nebraska, 
in the Orange Bowl to win the national championship. And Bebo hoping for a better story for the Longhorns here today. Sims on first down, rolling left. Pump fake, and he'll just hang on to it. Ooh. Steps out of bounds. Ooh. He took a shot by the uh, yeah, Adam the LSU Doran. faithful on the other side there. Adam Doran. Uh, well, they say you be careful going to the other bench. Yeah, why? Well, Nobody's going to hold you up. Yeah. Chris Sims on the bootleg. He rolls to his left. He's a left handed quarterback. Now he gets run out of bounds here. Watch Doran right there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. You know, that's the advantage of having 100 guys on the sideline. Well, one thing I will say about Doran, I mean, he just, I, I believe he just raised his hand up just to keep Sims from hitting him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't put anything into it. No. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it looked, it looked bad, but I, I don't think it was intentionally bad. Second down give is to Benson, and he is tackled by Lionel Turner. Just across midfield of the 49, it'll bring up third down for Texas. Tim, it's interesting, the two different approaches to practicing during the off month before a big bowl game. LSU, they came into this game, and they more or less had a crash course. They went two days for you know, eight practices in six days. They crammed it all in there. Well, and on the other side, Texas, yeah, they tried to spread theirs out and keep guys into it. Nick, uh, Nick Saban said that he was treating it like a one-game season, complete with minicamp. Training camp at the line yeah. of scrimmage, and Sims has still not completed a pass here in the second half. Batted down by Marquise Hill. He has the largest wingspan on the entire team. And again, Marquise Hill, he was the guy that slammed Sims earlier. He was the guy that brought down brought down the run play to start this half out. And that's a beautiful athletic play. He gets up field, gets pressure in the quarterback's face, and then still swats it down. Bradford trying to pin him inside the 20, but into the end zone. And LSU will get the football at the 20. Trailing 21-17 after the 49-yard punt by Bradford. We'll be back to Dallas in a moment. Like to send our happy New Year wishes to those of you who tuned into the SBC Cotton Bowl here in Dallas. You got purple and gold on one side. You got burnt orange on the other. Bright sunshine, the brass band, right? Oh, yeah. Great way to start the new year. Man, what a beautiful day. I mean, oh, last absolutely. year, we, we had every piece of building we could find in this town. <laughs> you guys thought you were in Green Bay last year. Yeah, absolutely. Man, a heck of a football game down the field. Woo, that was a rocket. On the line of the intended receiver, Jarrell Myers. And we can only wonder, you guys brought it up at the time. A short run out of bounds in the second quarter. And Randall came up limping a bit. Then two plays later, he rushed for 75 yards, getting inside the 10, leading to a touchdown. But since then, after getting up limping again after the long run, he's really struggled. You got to wonder if he's hurt. Well, he's looked like Marcus Randall. We watched Earl, you know, midway through this season. Right, right. Struggling. Out of the shotgun. Now he'll run it. Great Redding. play by Redding. Got it from the high. It's hard to believe that Corey Redding is 270, 275. And Tim, I asked you that the other day watching film because he moves so well. Well, Rodney Coming Reed. The corner. Yeah, Rod Rodney Reed's got his hands full right there. And he blocks to the inside. Then he tries to come back to the outside. And that just ain't happening. I mean, Corey Redding has too much speed, too much athleticism to try to chip before you block out in it. Looks like Rodney Reed's got his hands tied. get Texas for a late hit and Texas had the full on blitz coming too. I don't or, know that or Randall be. might be on Randall. Yeah. Because that flag came late. Yeah, it looked like he almost flipped the ball yeah. in Texas defenders face. 
Well, he's lucky there were whistles because Derek Johnson and Corey Redding were coming with full heads of steam. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. The distance to the goal. Third down. There's Marcus Randall, and he takes that ball when he throws yeah, it at Corey Redding. That's uncalled for there. And I know he doesn't want to get hit after the whistle. So the line, of scrimmage, keep cool. line of scrimmage, pardon me, Tim, has gone from a 20 all the way back inside the 8. Well, if you think back earlier when Michael Clayton caught a shot over the middle, and then he didn't retaliate. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Side handoff on a third and 22, and it's Tofield. First down and more. Dominic Davis Ooh. all the way out to midfield. What a stiff bar. Well, you saw the power running, and you thought initially Tofield, but that's Davis. Wow. Well, this is a beautiful draw play right here, and everyone in the stadium is thinking pass on this third and long. Well, watch it right here. There's the draw, and then. Davis does a beautiful job of cutting back across the grain of the defense. And look at this. Oh my goodness. It's Nathan Basher. Look at the strength there. And you know that's kind of a that's Texas Texas fans are thinking Ricky Williams with or that, Earl right? Campbell or Earl Campbell, yeah. <laughs> the heck of a stiff arm, and it was a great cut. Man, I like the play. What a momentum turner that could prove to be in this game on a third and 22. And now Randall to throw on first down. He wants it all. And then some. And just out of bounds going to Michael Clayton. You know, can Clayton do more? Here's a guy, only a sophomore. We've seen him make great catches right off the bat, started off in the game. He was a big factor. Then he goes over and plays defense. And he just misses that one. And yeah, this ball is is thrown almost uncatchable out of bounds. It's a great but, effort. But he by comes Clayton. up with it. Yeah, he comes up with it, but you know, they don't they don't get it because and he's again, limping. yeah. But again, Marcus Randall, Ronnie, it, it has not been accurate on these deep passes right. since he's hurt that You're calf. Right. And I still think it has to do with his plant foot, his ability to lean forward and get his his body into the throw. Well, they swing it out to Tofield in the flat, and the penalty flag is down on the play. He got to the 44, a gain of five, but will it come back? Offsides sides against Texas. Down. Well, Michael Clayton is catching a breather. He's had 13 plays on defense, including one. And that was a that was a star tackle. I mean, that was yeah, a beautiful yes, tackle. Was. And then five catches on offense, 75 yards. You know, I don't want to take anything away from Clayton. We brought up Chris Gamble, the Ohio State two-way performer. Just to give you an idea, that's 18 plays for Clayton on offense and defense. Gamble has had two games this year of over 100 plays in a game including 115 in an overtime game. He's a great player. You're not an Ohio State fan at all, are you? I'm a game fan. That's a fan playing both sides of the ball. They hand the ball off to Tofield, and he's inside the 40 on a second down carry, and he's close to first down yardage. Tim, you begin to wonder now as the game goes on, and I know Texas is up, but LSU, a little bit more physical, a little bit bigger up front, Will they begin to wear on the Texas defense? Texas has been out on the field a lot this game. I, I think, and I think that's the key. The size differential is one thing, but you can combat size by putting guys in gaps and shooting upfield, but you can't combat being on the field play after play and an overload of minutes. Exactly. Third 
and one. Good enough, it appears to be anyway, for a first down as they hand it off again to LeBrandon Tofield, the junior out of Independence, Louisiana. And they will indeed move the chain. So a third and 22 that went for a 44-yard run by Dominic Davis has kept this drive alive, and now they're marching deep into Texas territory. And Carl Reese, the Texas defensive coordinator, alluded to this yesterday. I said, I'm a little worried about if they start to lean on us, lay on us late in the fourth quarter, the size thing could be a big factor. And around the double reverse. They're trying to throw it. And they're going to throw it, and it's underthrown. They had Jarrell Myers make the throw. And he had an eye on Marcus Randall, the quarterback. Well, this is a New Year's Day play, right? You got the double reverse pass back to the quarterback, and the throw just does not get it done. He was open, too, <laughs> right? I mean, Marcus Randall had, had, had a nice separation there. The defense bought it. He just couldn't get it down. It's a good thing Jarrell is a senior. That may be the last pass he gets I, to throw from a, I a think, reverse standpoint. I think, I think Randall's got to get back to some crossing routes and throw some crossing routes to his receivers. Dominic Davis inside the 35, down to the 34. Again, Corey Redding on the stop. Because, you know, Ronnie, when you think about it, in the first half, when Marcus Randall was having most of his success throwing the ball, he was, he was moving outside the pocket, and he was also throwing those patterns, those crossing patterns, because Texas plays a lot of that man-to-man -man mm -hmm. coverage. And they that's like how you beat guys that. Up. Yeah, you right. have your receivers run away from it. Maybe you move the quarterback outside. You clear things out a little bit and just lead them with the pass. They've not done that. Most of their passing in the second half has been the long stuff down the sideline, not Robin's, uh, not Randall's strength. Third down. Randall will take it himself. Ball's out. The ball is loose. The Longhorns say they have it. They do. That's a missed opportunity by LSU. Maybe not to score, but if nothing less to go for a field goal or punt and play the field position game. I, I think it was Kalen Jakes who knocks that ball out of there. And then Lee Jackson comes up with his second fumble recovery of the day for Texas. Longhorns defensive end. It was Brian Pickrell, not Kalen Jakes. Pickrell 98 watching. He makes this tackle right there, and then this ball just pops right out. No one yeah. even touches it. Pickrell hits him. Well, that's just not very good ball, ball control. No, it's not. And it's an experience. You got to know what the state this game is in. Play the field position game down there. Again, this drive from their own 31. Sims checking off in the line of scrimmage. And a play fake to Benson. Looking downfield, great protection. Guns it over the middle, and who else? Williams dragged down at the 42-yard line. You're absolutely right, Tom. That, that was great protection. Anytime a quarterback can sit up in the pocket, stop his feet, and wait for his crosser to come all the way across the field, your offensive line is doing an outstanding job. And they're trying to pass off. Webster's trying to pass off to Hunt, but Hunt doesn't pick it up quick enough. Well, it's this play action fake, I think, that, that helps the protection set up and gives Chris Sims that big pocket. Flip 90. Pitch it to the near side. And Benson banks his way to the 39 yard line. I think Cedric Benson's going to have to drop off a bottle of Advil for, for Jack Hunt. <laughs> And a bag of ice. <laughs> that's, that's the second time we've seen Cedric Benson get downfield and say hello to Jack. Jack wants to know what type of wood that was. Was it birch, oak? But Hunt brings him down. That's all that matters. <laughs> like they say, those old defensive back coaches say, hey, it may not look pretty, just get him on the ground. And around to Roy Williams. Inside the 30. 
inside the 25. Cuts back. One more time. Touchdown, Roy Williams. What a cotton ball for this spectacular junior out of Odessa, Texas. I'll tell you what. It's a team game, but Roy Williams is a one-man offense. And you're right, Tim, that's what we said in the open. He's a guy that can change the game in one play, and he's had about three of those one plays. I think some players just see things at a different speed, and I think Roy Williams is one of those guys. It's called talent. Right after Bob Maggie, Roy Williams has touched the ball a grand total of four times in this game. He has two touchdowns. Well, this is just a beautiful thing to watch. It is, and this is the kind of stuff. Remember I said Terrell Owens? Right, I was going to say it's run after the catch. It's yak, rack, whatever you want to call it, but it's what a guy does once he has the ball in his hands. And that separates the good receivers, the okay receivers, from the ones that go to the Hall of Fame. And this is a guy that's been bothered by a hamstring injury most of the year as we said earlier didn't play in the Oklahoma game very well even though he did have one big play but he is lighting up the LSU secondary four touches 177 yards of offense just so you don't blame the LSU defenders take a look at this thing in real speed and decide if you could bring this guy down He's got the moves, he's got the speed, and then he's got the strength. Nick Saban, not happy about that. And you know what it is, Tim? It's a tackle. Yes, he's a great athlete. Yes, he's got jets, and he can go, and he's size. But you've got eight defenders back there. Somebody has got to at least touch the man. Well, they touch him. They just get right. all the way out to the 34-yard line. Nice return after having trouble finding the handle by Dominic Davis. Like to remind you this Sunday, the NFL second season begins round one of the NFL playoffs. The Giants visit San Francisco to take on the 49ers, who host their first playoff game in four years. Coverage of the NFC Wild Card begins Sunday, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific only on Fox. How about Tiki Barber and that? Heroic effort to help the Giants win that game against Philly. Nobody slept better in New York City than Tiki Barber that night. Brandon Tofield carries out to the 39 yard line, a gain of five on first down. Well, LSU now trailing by 11, still 340 to play, and we're only in the third quarter. This is a key drive for LSU. Not because there's not a lot of time left, but because they haven't answered to Texas. They came here in the second half, and Texas was up on them by four, and then they got some points, and then they got more points. LSU needs to answer right now. Well, they've moved the ball up right, and down but the they field all scored. game long. But I'll tell you, anytime they've gotten down close to Texas' end zone, you know, the Texas defense has answered. They've, they've turned them away numerous times down there near the red zone. Second down carry, good enough for a first down by LeBrandon Tofield. Basher able to chop him down close to midfield. And Tim, isn't that the mark of a good defense? You could call it bend, not break, whatever, but when it gets down into that green zone from 20 yards on in, you've got to tighten up and you've got to make big plays, and Texas has been able to do that. It's been the big plays going in that have hurt him. Look at this, man. There's the cotton bowl itself. I don't know where we are in that. It's sunny and it's beautiful. It's colorful. It's warm. It's been a, a great week here in Dallas. As Jarrell Myers makes a catch and he's tackled in Texas territory down close to the 45 yard line. And Ronnie, this is the kind of passing that I want to see Marcus Randall do. I want to see them call more of these kinds of plays. Let him throw the slam plays. Let him throw the crossing patterns. Let him get his rhythm back and his right. confidence back in his throwing. That's how they started the game. Exactly. With some quick stuff like that, and that quick stuff led to longer stuff. And they've got to get him back to that.
Full field. Wrapped up, slipped a tackle, still on his feet. Good enough for a first down to the 39. And LeBrandon Tofield, after a slow first half, starting to pick things up, as is this LSU ground game here late in the third quarter. And Tom, that ground game is about ball control and keeping Texas high-powered offense off the field. And that plan has worked great this entire game. Now they've got to get the ball in the end zone, but I think their plan coming in was to keep Sims on off the field, keep Roy Williams off that field. Well, part they, of the reason why they're keeping Roy Williams off the field is every time he touches it, exactly, he picks it up. You know? Play thing. Randall shakes one tackle, cannot shake a second. Reed Boyd drags him down in a penalty flag thrown back in midfield. That's just good tackling by Reed Boyd. Face mask. Will go against Texas. I think there may have been a pair of penalties on this play. We'll see from our referee Gerald Wright. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. 15 yard penalty, previous spot, first down. We'll take a look at the face mask here. Well, I don't know if it's Lee Jackson. Boy, if he, if he got it, it was very yeah. quick, and it definitely wasn't one of those uh, intentional deals. Well, I knew it wasn't Reed Boyd, but there it is yeah, right he got, there. He got it. It's enough to call. Once the official sees that head turn even the slightest bit and your hand on the mask, you're going to get popped. First down to the 25. Swarm. Yeah, and, and look where they are. They get down right. close, right? They get down close to the goal line. And that's where the Texas defense has just been outstanding all day today. And they do it with that penetration. Very aggressive play calling once they get down close. Corey Redding, the USA Today's National High School Defensive Player of the Year coming out of Houston, Texas, North Shore High School in 1998. A high school offensive player of the year in that same recruiting class, Chris Sims. The shotgun. There's that slant pattern. It's intercepted. Derek Johnson. Tim, it's unbelievable. We just got through teeing this up. When LSU drives the field, get down to the red zone, they self-destruct. Well, That's two series in a row. I don't know if it's as much self-destruct or as great as great like defense. Texas, right? I mean, exactly. Texas. No, that's what speed does for you. And speed got Corey Redding. The sack and the fumble that led to the touchdown. And speed Boy, is what gets Derek Johnson this pick. He reads it and he jumps the slant. And he was definitely right there. There's no doubt about whether or not Derek Johnson was in position to make the play. Texas defense had 21 interceptions during the season, creating 32 turnovers. And they have three of them here today. Sims fires across the middle. And the catch is made by Ivan Williams, the fullback, who caught 18 passes during the regular season. That was a nice shot. And then you go to a guy that nobody thinks is going to be involved in the passing game. You take your fullback, split him out, and well, you I, get him the ball. I think this pass is a setup. I think this is a setup <laughs> to throw towards Roy Williams, yeah. but not to Roy Williams. Yeah. And I think the next one goes to Roy Williams. Yeah, and Roy Williams had several steps down the sideline. Talked about that rhythm. Sounds is in the rhythm. Big chase. Lejeune, the senior, playing in his final college game, picks up the sack, and that's a big one, a loss of nearly 10. Well, these are those secondary blitzes that Chris Sims said he knew Nick Saban was going to be throwing at him. In fact, he brought home a cut-up tape during Christmas vacation so he and his dad could 
look for these kind of blitzes. So we go to the fourth quarter. Texas in front, 28-17. Chris Sims trying to win at the Cotton Bowl Stadium for the first time in his career is 15 minutes away from doing just that. Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is brought to you by Circuit City. We're with you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together with low fares. By Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And by Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Chris Sims and the Longhorns have not won on this field during his four years at Texas. Quick hit to Sloan Thomas. And he's inside the 40, stopped at the 39-yard line by Brady James. It'll bring up third down and about seven for Texas. Tell you, Tim, Brady James is quite the jokester, isn't he? He came in our meeting room yesterday, and he uh, he might be in a stand-up back somewhere. Why, because he got on my hair? Yeah, he, yeah you know. <laughs> but, you know, middle linebackers always got something going on. Brady James has plenty going on. Well, I got thick skin. I can take it. Yeah, you took it. I wasn't worried about you. All out blitz coming against Sims, and he'll get it. Melvin Oliver, a redshirt freshman, who had five sacks during the season. We talked about Nick Saban scheming against Chris Sims. And they needed a big one now, and here it comes. This is an all-out blitz. Safeties, linebackers, even Michael Clayton, yep. they send a wide receiver on the blitz. When you send a wide receiver on a blitz, you're serious. You're blitzing everybody. Ryan Bradford, the punt. Low line drive, and Davis will let it go over his head. And did they down it? It looked like they did. At the one-yard line. 49 yard punt dropped beautifully in there by the junior college transfer from Trinity Valley Brian Bradford. We are in the fourth quarter 28-17. And Chris Sims uh, have been the, the two most impressive leaders I've seen in a long time on and off the field with this team. They're tough, they're aggressive, but they're smart, they're gentle and they, they're caring and they, um, they care about more than just winning. They got us back on the map. And they did it with class, they did it with a swagger, and, and those two guys have definitely left their name in, in the history books at Texas. Chris Sims trying to give the Longhorns a win in this stadium for the first time since a Cotton Bowl New Year's Day 1999. Starting this drive from their own one, they hand it off to LeBrandon Tofield, and he picks up three. Well, this is right where you want to go to LeBrandon Tofield. He's your big strong back. He's your north south runner. You are pinned up against your own goal line. And this is that's how you you got to punch your way out. But don't be surprised if they come with something a little funky some spread formation and use those backs. That's something they've gotten away from from the first half is throwing the ball to the backs in the perimeter. And it off that was a shot. Reed Boyd delivered that blow. Reed Boyd's been making tackles all game long. And right there, he gets perfect pad level, gets up underneath Tofield. You know what Boyd is? He's one of those guys that can find the football in traffic. And that's what a middle linebacker has to be able to do. You know, whether you take a good read, bad read, with all those bodies floating around, you got to find the football and get to it. Third down and five out of the shotgun. Randall rolls right and through right in between a pair of receivers. Number 14, Clayton, and number four, Reggie Robinson. Let's go downstairs to Brian Boldinger. Yeah, Tom, Texas just finished that series there on defense without their All-American Corey Redding. He was on the sideline here, getting his left wrist and his left hand fully taped up. But he's ready to go and be out there next series. Baldy, thank you. The final college game for Corey Redding. You guys will be watching him play undoubtedly this time next year. 
Corey Redding acts like he's ready for the pros now in terms of his media interviews. Yeah. Very polished, very well spoken. He really is a sharp kid. I was impressed that as a defensive lineman, he knew all about the wide receivers and the running backs and the quarterbacks. And, yeah. and he had the whole game plan down. He is as sharp a young man getting ready to make his way out of college as you're ever going to come across. Welcome back to the SBC Cotton Bowl Classic and Happy New Year. Hope everybody's feeling okay this early afternoon. Our crew's been here since about 3.30 in the morning. And a lot of these fans were here tailgating shortly thereafter. Freshman gets a carry, tries to turn it to the outside, run out of bounds at the LSU 42 yard line, and that clock now running under 12 minutes. And this is where LSU's defense right now. I, I think they need to come aggressively right now. I think they need to run some run blitzes, some some pass blitzes. They need to stop Texas, but I think they need to stop them in a dramatic fashion. Yeah, well, here's where you say, okay, Roy Williams, we're gonna lock you up man to man. You've beaten us before, but our backs are against the wall. We gotta make something happen. We gotta get Marcus Randall and our offense back out on the field. Well, remember the last time they, they brought the full blitz on, on Chris Sims? I think that's exactly what they need to be doing right now. So we won't see it on this play. Sims had an open receiver across the middle, Roy Williams, and just threw yep. it too low and too far in front. See, Williams is open no matter what you do. Whether you blitz, stay back, play eight man front, so you might as well send, send the house and get some pressure on Sims and maybe you get a bad throw. Right, well, they, they get the bad throw anyway, but here's Roy Williams and he drives Webster upfield and then he comes back to the inside. And he's open, Sims just misses him. Now here's where I gotta believe LSU is gonna bring some, bring some bodies of Chris Sims. They're, they're messed up, they're trying to get things lined up. You see they just switched around. Is made by Williams. You know, we talk about his hands. Yeah. You could hear that ball hit his hand. He's just saw, they say he catches everything in his hand. I think he got the first down. I'll tell you, this guy has made a couple of unbelievable catches here today, including this one. This is a fastball high and away from Roy Williams. What you say, Tommy, high and away, and he chased it, That's almost, and he got it. Yeah, Randy Johnson-like <laughs> fastball coming there. We'll, we'll see on the uh, <laughs> He chased it and got a piece of it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it really is a man. I mean, you know, guys, we were talking about it at halftime as you look at the career numbers for Roy Williams. just spectacular. And if you weren't with us earlier, he will return for his senior year next season. This guy is really something special, and you've seen it here today. He's a one-man offense. I mean, He's got two touchdowns. He's got 142 yards in the air. And then he had the one touchdown off of the reverse. And it was just a spectacular run. Once he hit the corner. What a great luxury for Chris Sims to have a receiver like Roy Williams to throw to. Pitch it to Selvin Young, who's getting the bulk of the playing time here in the second half, and he's run out of bounds. Another Texas first down down to the 21. And Tim going back to Roy Williams. He credits his performance and his ability to a guy that left here last year and is now playing cornerback for the San Diego Chargers, and that's cornerback Quinton Jammer. He said, the first time I lined up on Quinton Jammer in practice, I ran right by him and caught a 60-yard bomb, and I danced and I talked, and I said, this is going to be easy. This is good stuff. He said, I never got off the line from Quinton Jammer any time after that. Well, he said he, he, the next day he didn't get out of the backfield. <laughs> right? He said Jammer had him going backwards. Brady James just throws Young down to the turn. You know, great players help make other great players. You practice against great players. And I think that's the case there for that man, Roy Williams. 
You know, guys, and I, and I got I to say, uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate enough to, to have a chance to be around so many of these great, great athletes at the college level, the pro level. Right. How many times in this day and age do you hear about, you know, young people are this way or, you know, the kids today, they're that way. We have met just some absolutely terrific young men on both of these teams over the last couple of days. Absolutely. Two great programs that uh, these guys are a great reflection of. Sims fires a bullet. There's a nice throw by Chris Sims. Yeah, that, that is. And what happened there, Tommy, is that well, this is this is improvisation by Sims. Pocket breaks down. He uses his feet. He's got a little bit of pocket mobility. He sets up, and then he guns it right in there. And, and what happened there, Tom, was that they tried to check out of the blitz. Sims audible. They tried to check out of it. Got caught in between the check. Well, I'm, I'm impressed with Chris Sims and the Longhorn offense on this drive here because they've got LSU down and now they're they're trying to take them out. Play fake Sims rolls throws. It's Williams. Did he get in? No signal given yet. And now touchdown Texas. And now they might be out. Just a very well executed play. We see that in the pro level a lot. Play action, the bootleg to the opposite side. And you got to remember Sims is a left hander. That's his natural side. A lot of teams, defensive teams, aren't used to looking at the quarterback going that way. Dusty Mangum for the point after. Ivan Williams getting his second receiving touchdown. Williams, one of only three Texas players ever with a 100-yard rushing game and a 100-yard receiving game. The other two, Johnny Lamb Jones and Eric Metcalf. <laughs> Texas has broken it wide open after a slow start, leading LSU 35-17. Impressive 47 yard drive capped off by the touchdown throw Sims driving Williams. Well Tommy you talked about Chris Sims not winning the big game. I think this was a big game. This was a big game for Texas yeah, against the dangerous LSU team that has upset teams in the last two years in bowl games. They started off down. They came back and I think Chris Sims kept his composure. It deserves a lot of credit. Absolutely. Because coming in, the knock was he'll play great at home, but when they get down to big crunch time, he's not going to make it happen. Yeah, Sims, no uh, national championship. No, and, and did not lose a game in Austin, Texas. No national championship. No Big 12 championship. And, and a disaster last year against Colorado. And you know, Ron, for that matter, Sims has never been first team in his own conference as the quarterback. Much less an All American or a Heisman Trophy winner. 15 yard penalty, first down. Enough time to get into this, but it is unbelievable to people outside the state of Texas the pressure that has been on this kid since the day he changed his mind after signing with Tennessee and then coming to Austin. More on that shortly. We'll be right back. Chris Sims almost giddy over there on that Texas sideline. Why not? His Longhorns lead 35-17. And as Mac Brown said all week long to his team and to us, Chris Sims, Corey Redding, and that senior class have been integral in turning this Texas program back around. For more on that, let's send it downstairs to Brian Boldinger. Hey guys, this senior class has a chance of winning more games than any class in the history of the University of Texas football. 40 wins if they win today. I just talked to Chris Sims and their slogan from the seniors is take back Dallas. They haven't won in Dallas in the last five tries. Chris Sims is smiling right now, a thousand watch smile. They're enjoying this right now. Baldy, thank you very much. Nine, 12 to play in the game. And again, it's a dive. 
carried a moment ago, and he's inside the 35, down to the 33. Joseph Adine, a redshirt freshman out of Houston, Texas, one of the few that got away. Well, it's never over till it's over, but this is exactly what LSU is going to have to do. Marcus Randall just take take the field 10, 20 yards at a, pl at a play. High snap, and Randall will just fall away. We have to remember, it's been a strange year for LSU. You know, in some ways, they're lucky to be here, and in other ways, they're probably happy to be here. They started out 6-0. Matt Mock was the original quarterback. He gets hurt. And it was up and down after that. And really, Marcus Randall's done an excellent job of saving, salvaging the season. Well, it was Being interesting. thrown in there. Talking to Nick Saban, and he said that not only did Mock get hurt, but that was when Tofield broke his arm. He said that Mock and Tofield, along with Brady James, were the real leaders of this team. So he lost two-thirds of his of his critical leadership not to mention he had to suspend Damon James the free safety yeah he said those were the, the, the four leaders and as uh, Tim was pointing out now you lose three of the four mm -hmm. after you had a five and one start and you're coming off a win over Florida well Marcus Randall has flagged a little bit here in the third quarter of this game but he started this thing out and it looked absolutely fantastic. At one point, he was 9 of 12. Oh, dangerous throw there. Knocked down by Huff and nearly taken the other way. The one other name we failed to mention, Henderson, broke his forearm against Ole Miss. He was the receiver, you may remember, that caught that bluegrass miracle, the 75-yard Hail Mary touchdown against Kentucky on the final play of the game and you know he's big they don't talk about it but that's big because you don't have a complimentary guy to go along with Clayton on the other side and that's why they bring in Skyler Green and they use the backs are trying to make up for that speed that they don't have on the other side of the field Jarrell Myers maybe a yard it'll bring up third and nine Came in, we mentioned with a five game bowl winning streak. Tied for the longest in Division I football with North Carolina and Miami. Of course, the Hurricanes have not lost a game in over two years. Randall took a shot. He did. And he had Myers. Mike Huff comes up on the safety blitz right up the center of the pocket. Gives Randall a mouthful. And you have to remember going back to what Mac Brown told us that the last time that Longhorns were here, they were upset by Arkansas. Mac Brown said it was an embarrassment. He said he looked at his own bowl record and it was five and five. And he said he talked to Bobby Bowden and said, How do you guys prepare for a bowl game? because it's not working for us. And we want to emulate what you do. And Bowden said, I, I, just, I just keep the guys working. Keep them working. Don't take time off. Don't let them get out of a rhythm. But don't burn them out at the same time. 40-yard field goal is good by Corbello. It's interesting to note for Mac Brown, I mean, Bowden's the only guy he can call. Since 1990, only Bowden and Paterno have more wins. Only Bowden has more consecutive winning seasons in the last 13 than Mac Brown. See Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is brought to you by SBC. Ordinary people, extraordinary job. Hey, they did an extraordinary job with this bowl game. Huh? Oh, How about man. the swag? Yeah, oh, yeah. man. How are we going to get it home? <laughs> I got enough candy to rot out every tooth I have <laughs> for the next three years. This is always just such a great time. We're just so honored and privileged to be a part of it. Onside kick, and LSU has recovered. Or have they? It came loose again. And a mad scramble for the football. The Tigers say they have it, and they do. Uh, we got one signal going Texas, one signal going LSU. 
Like he may have been out a little late last night. <laughs> the guy pointing for Texas. He was. Well, I'll tell you what, all of a sudden, right? LSU, who looked like they were down and out, they come with the onside kick. Ronnie Prude, number one, got in there to get it. Those are the kind of plays that exemplify this LSU team. And that's Jack Hunt. He's in on that. Now Randall out of the shotgun. Rolls, throws across the oh. Caught by Clayton. What a catch at midfield. All right. We're talking about Williams' hands. That right there was a catch. Fabulous. He Bird. had to come back and hide for that ball. Randall is. And again, Randall limping around as that clock will start back up once they set the chain. Under 7.30 to go. They need. I like the way they moved him out of the pocket, though. Hand it off to Tofield inside the 45, down to the 44. Of course, we have a two point conversion in college football, just like the NFL. So a 15 point spread. They could take the lead with a pair of touchdowns and two point conversion. Tim, you just made a great point as to what may be happening to LSU's offense with the injury to Randall. I don't think they can get him out of the pocket as much as they would like to. They're forced to call plays to keep him in the pocket, and that's not necessarily his strength. That is all and nearly intercepted. And again. Lee Jackson right in the thick of things. But they are, Ronnie, going back to those crossing routes yeah. that were so effective early in this football game. He's trying to hit one of those crossers, but just a nice job. I think that was Pickrell. Pickrell. He was the guy who forced the fumble. You know, I got to ask you guys a that, question. There's an Oklahoma guy that got away. Well, let me ask you guys a question here. You guys see things up here like things they did effectively in the first half. I think a lot of fans are able to see that on television. It's, it's a slower game when you sit up here and watch it on TV as that one is thrown away. And the logical fan that I ask when I watch a football game and hear you guys say this stuff on an NFL telecast is why doesn't the coaching staff see it? Or do they? Good question, Tom. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, it's like you hand the ball off to a guy. Well, six out of ten plays. He runs on those six carries for 65 yards, and everybody's saying, well, why didn't he get it the other four times? I, I think what happened was Marcus Randall was hot, and I think they yeah. thought that he could start to do everything and make every throw on the field, and he completed some good passes to the outside and deep. Right. But he struggled, and I think now they've got him back into his game of throwing these short crossing backs. This is fourth down. And it's intercepted. Derek Johnson still on his feet. And then caught from behind down to the 28. That should just about do it. Ran at 6.33 to go. But a 15-point Texas lead. And a penalty flag came in. Are they saying this is going to be against Texas? If it is, there's still hope for LSU. Well, the LSU sideline, they're waving, let's go back. Nick Saban's clapping. Look at that. There's still hope. That's an automatic first down. And now Randall will watch as his main target Clayton comes Clayton over to the sideline. Offside. Defense. Five yard penalty. Previous spot, first down. And Corey Redding may be the guy yeah, with the right. jump. And Tom, and further answering your question, another part of it, like we say, the injury to Randall, it's hard to switch game plans even at halftime, even when you're supposed to make those big adjustments. They come into this game, been practicing for a month to do this, roll out, throw here, and now you got to switch. It's hard. It's hard enough to do it at the pro level, even harder at the collegiate. It's a long ball and just does overthrow Denny Brazil, the redshirt freshman from Houston, Texas. And Tim, the difference also between the second half and the first half, you can feel the desperation in their passing game instead of the calculation. Right. The crossing routes, 
uh, the quick slants, the post corner routes, the timing routes out there. Now it's like, hey, draw it up in the dirt, go. We got to get to the end zone. Well, I tell you, if you're going to pick a guy to throw to, he was looking at the right guy right there in Brazil. A world class sprinter anchored LSU's 4x100 meter relay national championship team and was the SEC's male track and field freshman of the year. Flag down as Randall at the 38 yard line. Clock continues to roll as we close in on six minutes. Now, that to me is a desperation no, that, play. Right, I mean, you've right. got a quarterback who's hobbling <laughs> out there. Absolutely. And you go with the you go with the quarterback draw on second long. You wasted down on that one. You should have just threw one up again. I mean, he's he's having trouble moving around out there. I, you don't want to go to the quarterback draw, but it, it, look, it's tough for LSU right now because yeah. Clayton is their go-to guy. Right. He's their big receiver. He's the guy with all the talent right now. He's on the sideline hurt. Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator, I'm sure on that play, thinking, let me get to a manageable third down. And now he's at a third nine. They're going to have to work for this one. Up with a sack, forced fumble, which which Lee Jackson then ran in for a touchdown to score Texas's first points of the day. Third and eight. Pass completed down to the 24-yard line to Skylar Green. Trying to run that inside wide receiver screen. You might remember the Chicago Bears made this thing real popular a couple years ago. And Green broke one for 70-some yards against Arkansas. But obviously Texas has scouted that play very well and knowing it's coming because they've shut it down today. Well the one thing that LSU still does have out on the field even without Michael Clayton is some speed and Skylar Green is one of those guys and he can get behind the defense. Well this is the ball game pretty much right here for LSU trying to keep it alive on a fourth down and wide open was Myers and it's incomplete. Looked like it went right through his hands. They had the speed. They had the right play. They had the right throw. But Myers didn't have the right hands. So that's Michael Clayton's ball right there. Just you know said, what I mean? Exactly. How many did we see Clayton catch today? On the ground, behind him. So now Chris Sims will come back onto the field with 5.06 to go. Sims in his freshman year played in six games, made one start, then the following year became involved in the major Applewhite controversy. That's when Applewhite was a reigning Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year, came back the next year. Mac Brown gave Sims a job, Applewhite won it back. You know, you can say what you want to, but this gets maybe not a big monkey, but a small monkey off of Chris Sims' back. And I think for him, he wanted to leave Texas knowing and let every, everyone else know that he could win in the big game. And like you say, take Dallas back. Well, you know the thing that really impresses me most about Chris Sims is the fact that he has weathered this storm from the Texas fans, from the Texas media, and it's toughened him, but it hasn't embittered him. Because, right. you know, uh, before I got here, my, my wife Alyssa was with the kids down in the media center. And I think what he's learned the four years here in Texas, he's going to take with him. Well, he said he, he's he, seasoned to go into the NFL and handle that kind of pressure. Well, he watched his dad go through it as a kid. Sat you know, in the Phil, stands, right? You look back at Phil Sims now and you say, well, hey, he won, he won a Super Bowl and he's a star and everyone loves him and he's, a, you know, an analyst and, uh, on TV and he does a great job. But there was a day when people in New York, they, they booed Phil Sims when he was drafted in the first round. When he was an guys. MVP. And they when you go and play in Texas, it is about playing well, playing hard, and winning. Forty-nine to go, and they'll pitch it to the freshman Young, who is chopped down back at the thirty, and that'll bring up fourth down, and Texas will punt it. We talked a little about Selvin Young, Tim, and that's another thing that great programs always have is they've always got a guy waiting to take your place once you get a little bit marginal. What was Ricky Ricky Williams and Priest Holmes in the same backfield together? Mm -hmm. Ricky Williams, the fullback. 
And as you and said, it's, that, it's almost comical when you think back to that. And, and as you said though earlier, Ronnie, that's not to take anything away from Cedric Benson because he's had some he's had some spectacular games here. He's 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 done a great job. That was a big difference. Mac Brown said he had to get used to coming from North Carolina. You, you got 300 and some high schools there. You come to Texas, you got over 1,200 to recruit from. Well, Mac said one of the hardest things was explaining to people why he couldn't offer their son or daughter or player a scholarship to the University of Texas. For either one of these programs, you just look around you today and you see all the purple and gold on one side, you see all the burnt orange on the other. These are big time programs and a great place to be a football player. And, you know, there's nothing like being recruited. Tim, you were recruited. I was recruited. In fact, Nick Saban, along with Earl Bruce, came into my house when I was a high school senior. And it just gives you a special feeling. But when you live in the state of Texas, you better think about one school first. Well, you know, if you're, if you're a class player, look one of the that. top guys. Well, I looked at these numbers and I said, you know, that. <laughs> That's more guys in scholarship. <laughs> then I realized, well, you, you got a bunch of walk-ons at the University of Texas, right? 18 of their 120 players are from outside the border. That's remarkable. And, and there are a lot of other schools coming in here doing pretty well, you know, recruiting-wise. I mean, you look at Oklahoma and all the players they've gotten out of here. It's a live ball. That is a lateral. And it goes out of bounds. When well, you talk about Texas fielding its team from Texas, and then you look at LSU and they do pretty much the same thing. The vast majority of their players are homegrown. It's always so interesting to take a look at these schools and where they're getting their players. I mean, some of the, the traditional powerhouse areas. Nick Saban said, I've recruited the state of Ohio more than any any place I've ever been. He said, I've lived there, coached there collegiately, went to college there, coached in the NFL there. He said, we don't have a single guy from that state on this team. That's just a shot there. Isn't it? I mean, to think that, to think that Texas and LSU do not have a single player from two very rich high school states in Ohio and Pennsylvania. It's remarkable. They don't need them. And they don't even, really. And you can even go to Florida. The Florida, yes, Florida kids are going to want to go to Florida State, Miami, University of Florida. But you're right, that, that is quite a number. Today we've talked so much about Texas, but uh, Marcus Randall. I think it's safe to say this young man is playing hurt for the better part of half of this game, and Randall has uh, has done a solid job. Great job, no, solid to give himself a chance to compete for the starting quarterback job next year. Absolutely. Well, he started out great, and I think he got hurt, and I think he tailed off. But right. on the other side of the ball, I think you heard earlier Mac Brown talk about two seniors that he felt were integral to this program. One was Chris Sims, who we talked a lot about, and the other is this guy right here, Corey Redding, who, as you remember, Texas is down 10-0, and Corey Redding's the guy who comes up with the big play, the sack, the forced fumble, and Lee Jackson runs it in to put Texas on the board and really shift what looked like was going to be an ugly day for Texas. Randall drilled as he turns it loose. Here's Corey Redding. He starts it out. He's working against the run. He's making big plays there. Helping Chase Randall down. Here's the biggest play of the day, I think, for Texas. The sack, the forced fumble, and the touchdown. And he said again, he, he learned to work from his mom. He said his mom fought her way through his childhood. That's right. In fact, Boy, can you do a little bit of that in Austin, Texas? I gotta tell you guys, I, I'm not down at all about this LSU team. You look at what they have in the future. Randall's gonna be back. Clayton, 
sophomore, he's going to be back. They've got some weapons. I agree with you, Ron. I think Michael Clayton is a real force. Skyler Green didn't hear a lot about him today, but LSU fans know him very well. Today's game produced by Jeff Cowan, directed by Rich Russo, the associate directors, Fran Morrison and Jason Wormser. Our broadcast associates, Eric Billingmeyer and Kevin Dresser. Our technical producer, Joe Stevens. And our technical director, Bob Goosley. The senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown. And the executive producers at Fox Sports are Ed Gorn and David Hill. There you see the Field Scoble Trophy awarded to the winner of the annual SBC Cotton Bowl, this in its 67th edition. I love what Mac Brown said to us two days ago, and he said, you know, when people say to me, does this game, how much does this game to mean, mean to you? He said, when people ask me that, I think they just don't know the game of football. Every game means something. You always want to win a game, and of course, We've talked throughout this broadcast about winning this game for this class of seniors gives them 40 more than any other class in Texas history. But Max said even without that, even without the numbers and the records, it's a football game. It's a cotton bowl. It's a great college tradition on New Year's Day, the first game of this new year. And we want to win it. Well, you can rest assured uh, the president of this great country of ours, President Bush and his wife, his two daughters, of course, uh, Barbara and Jenna, attend the University of Texas, undoubtedly have enjoyed the melodic tones of Ron Pitts and Tim Green, along with Brian Baldinger here today. So happy new year to the first family. President Bush actually served on the Cotton Bowl Committee. He is the uh, only president in our country's history to have served on a college football bowl committee I'll tell you the hospitality down here has been unbelievable all the uh, like you said the swag we we got from the committee and a nice lunch we had yesterday and it's been all good for Bevo well, I tell you started I, out I, a little I, rough for Bevo but it ended up okay well, well, I took a peek <laughs> down at the real Bevo down at the other end it's been well, a like long it's, year it's time to take a break I tell you, uh, Bebo needs a little weight on them bones. Don't talk to Bebo about the Atkins diet. Look at him. He ain't trying to hear it. He's ready for a, a little rest between now and spring football. <laughs> and that time won't be, be very long either. Those boys get it going pretty quick. I saw Young, young trying to go out without his lid. <laughs> You're tough, but not that tough. <laughs> and now, Tech, you've got to be kidding me. A minute 15 to go here, and Chris Sims is calling a timeout. Chris Sims' last throw in college as a Longhorn, and it's an interception. That's not how you want to go out. But. I think if you win this game, you win in the Cotton Bowl, it probably doesn't matter. You know, for your first time, you get that big thing, the big game thing, yeah. at least partially off your back. You don't worry about it. He's still smiling. It'll be interesting to see the kind of pro career he has. I think right now there's a fair number of question marks about what he'll do. It's thrown out of bounds. 53 seconds remain. 35 20, Texas in front.
incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down as we're under 50 seconds to play. Clayton has been a warrior today. Guy's hurting and he's still trying to make something happen. Brian Boldinger will be down on the field presenting Mac Brown and the University of Texas with a field Scoble trophy following the game. Stay with us for that. Well, LSU saw one miracle victory, right, in the Kentucky game, but yeah. Then they only needed one touchdown. Here they need two. And it's not going to happen. Catch made, but won't be enough for the first down by a dive. And Texas will take over with 42 seconds left. Did they, they dunk him? Mac didn't like that. <laughs> That's great. Corey Redding, a senior, the, the first guy in there to give Mac Brown a big hug. And so many of the other Longhorn seniors and players will do the same. He's got the big hug from Derek Dockery. Another senior, a first team All American, Alvin Trophy semifinalist this year. Talk so much about the pressure of playing in Texas, of coaching in Texas. Nothing shy of a national championship will do. But the bottom line is the last two years, Texas 10 victories last season. It'll be 11 victories this season. It's hard to argue with that. And now Sims will take a knee, and that'll do it. So Chris Sims. Able to cast away the demons of this playing field, having never won a game inside the Cotton Bowl until today. You can look at the final numbers for Sims, but a lot of those numbers thanks in huge part to his fabulous junior wide receiver, Roy Williams. We'll take a timeout, 35-20 our final. We'll present the Field Scoble Trophy to the Texas Longhorns when we return. Thank you. 35-20 our final. Texas wins the 67th edition of the SBC Cotton Bowl here in Dallas, Texas. Their goal was to take back Dallas after struggling here, not winning since the Cotton Bowl in 1999 on New Year's Day. And Chris Sims caps off his college career, tied with Marty Akins for the second most wins, second only to Bobby Lane in the history of quarterbacks at the University of Texas. Well, it was a day of big plays for Texas today. It started out with Corey Reddick. That forced fumble led to their first touchdown. And then it was a big day from Roy Williams, Ronnie. We talked about Williams in the open. We knew that Williams had that ability to change the game in one play. And he not only changed it in one play, he changed it in about three. Well, and Brian Boldinger is standing by. Boy, oh, look at Chris. You know, with all the stuff he's gone through, you think back to the last year's Big 12 championship loss to Colorado and got pulled out of there and things didn't go too well and came home, had 40 messages on his cell phone, all from Longhorn fans, not too happy about the way things went. Quite a contrast to well, where he's at right now. It's a, it's a huge win for him and it couldn't happen to a much nicer guy. You just have to feel so good for this young man. The enormous pressure placed upon the shoulders of a 17 year old graduating from high school and he's battled through it all and will leave as a winner. Let's go downstairs to Brian Boldinger. Thank you Tom down here right in the middle of the Cotton Bowl. A celebration has begun. First of all let's start with the president and CEO of SBC Southwest. Just a couple of words here. John Stanky. Congratulations to Coach Brown and the Longhorns on putting a cap on what's been a fantastic week. We'd also like to thank the Cotton Bowl Athletic Association and Finn for just doing a fabulous job with this game. 
And now for the presentation of the Field Scoville Award, the chairman of SBC Cotton Bowl, Vin Ewing. Vin, take it away. Mac, congratulations on a great football game. You guys are the champions of the SBC Cotton Bowl Classic. Mac Brown, you came here five years ago, took over a team that was four and seven. You have restored the tradition, the pride of the University of Texas football. This is a culmination here today. Well, it is. It's a, a great day for our seniors, great day for the University of Texas. I'm, I'm proud for our football team. First time in school history to win 11 games back to back, and I'm proud of these guys. Coaches did a great job, but these guys fought their guts out, came from behind, really proud of them. Mac, just a little bit about that senior class, the winningest class in the history of the University of Texas football. 40 wins with this one today. Well, uh, our seniors are unbelievable. They've done a tremendous job, averaged 10 wins a season, and uh, they've left ex expectations even higher for this group. We'd also like to thank those fans. All right, Mac, thank you very much. With that, Tom, we'll take it back upstairs to you. Brian, thank you very much. Gentlemen, it's been a real pleasure. We've had a great time this week. The tremendous hospitality here in Dallas. Happy New Year to you and your family. Thanks, Tommy. Great working with you, Ronnie. Have a happy New Year. Good seeing you guys. Appreciate it. For more information on college football, log on to FoxSports.com. So for Tim Green, Ron Pitts, Brian Boldinger, and our entire crew that has worked so hard here in Dallas, I'm Tom Brenneman saying so long and thanks so much for being with us. We're our final score in the 67th SBC Cotton Bowl Classic is Texas 35, the LSU Tigers 20. Don't forget the football playoffs begin on Fox this Sunday. And we'll look forward to seeing you back in the Cotton Bowl this time next year.